Hey, hello. Hey, dudes. Hey, Derg. Solid, solid shark laugh. I feel like I can depend on you to do a shark laugh right when it's time to meet it. Time for me to go I got live. a question. What's up? Ah, uh, it's hot. It's fucking hot. I'm. There's a small chance I will bail on this stream early because it's hot as fuck. Also, hello, Team Worm. You guys are doing good. Had kind of a stressful Monday. I had a bunch of doctor's appointments. My doctors suck. They're like, oh, your your fucking stomach keeps hurting. Well, all the tests are fine, so you you're healthy. You're fine. Like, no, I'm not. I fucking randomly feel like garbage. It's fucking annoying. I can't eat a breakfast burrito without feeling like I'm going to fucking explode on the inside. That's not healthy. Fuck. It's so hot you can't wear clothes? Now, I want to be honest, when it's really hot, like a white shirt that you just get wet over and over, like, that feels way better than no clothing. Just, just my, my personal opinion. Unless it's a wet heat, I guess. Then you're then you're just gonna be wet, and not evaporatively cooling. I don't know. Anyway, uh, shit. So last time, last time we were here, uh, we achieved this. Let's let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna be very sad. Um, because it should just fucking work. We had lots of problems. Okay. So Radicate, we we got a readout of Radicate's fatigue down here. It's currently forty. It's gonna it's gonna bump up to 50 and then when it goes past 50 it'll get to 55 in a few seconds he's gonna there he did it he did it he, he walked onto his nest and so what's happening is uh it's navigating the the behavior tree and uh if we if we do it again there's something I was gonna fix that I figured out how to fix. Uh, so okay, we're just, we're just going to hang out with this in a second. He's just going to, he's going to go really weird. He's not going to go in a straight line. He's going to go like at a 45 degree angle to right here. Then he's going to go straight up and there it is. There it is. All right. It did exactly what I said. So I figured out how to fix that. Stand and walk. You what now? Me or the eradicate? Um, okay, so the, th the the thing that I needed to fix is we had we had kind of taken from this nice example that we've been using by Liam Flannery. Uh, he demonstrated a behavior tree, but only in um, one one movement dimension, only in the x x movement. So then I took that a step further and did x and y separately. But then I like. The whole time, I'm like, there's a way to just do this in one command. And of course there is. I just couldn't figure out the exact um, for format for it. Uh, and so what it would seem is that I made a note. I found the right answer. Um, so what you want to do... Shit, where this? This instead. So we want to just replace it with that. Um, so what you want to do is... It's still like actor.position... But then you have to put actor dot position over here, I guess, to let it know that it's the actor's position that is moving toward and then your target. And then this is the speed at which is going to happen. Uh, so. I swear this worked. I, I like later that day, later la after last week's stream, later that day, I came back, got this to work. It, it took like five minutes. I thought it was going to be a whole thing or I would have done it on stream. Um, so now we should just have Radicate like nicely going in a straight line, walking over to his nest. It'll it'll take 15 seconds total. Hey, there he goes. Okay. So minor difference, but this is how we need things set up if we're going to um to use a nav mesh and have it not look truly bizarre. <laughs> Um, we don't want X positioning and Y positioning handling handled separately. Should I use Delta so it won't be dependent on frame rate? Oh. Shit. 
Dirk, you could be right. Um. Now, for now, let's just leave it. But I do need to do some research about that. Life could be a dream. What if we use Delta? Or is that more of a philosophical statement? Life could just be a dream. I kind of hope it is. I kind of hope when I die, I wake up and there's more life to happen. Because, uh, I don't know. There's too much cool shit to do. Um, okay, so so we we did we did the thing, right? I, so we need to move on to the next thing. And uh, I'm not totally sure what that is. So I have over here. Hold on, hold on. Let's... Let's go full screen with Firefox. Ooh, no, 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 just regular Firefox. And then if we unminimize, this was the list of things. It's just a song that appeared in your head. All right, all right. Uh, okay, so we made Raticate go to his nest. So now we're gonna make him go to his foods and his water. Um, and then then we're going to figure out the nav mesh. Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, where the hell is my world? Great, we're already in it. Uh, let's say, for example, that Raticate's nest was actually up here. When the nav mesh is functional, Raticate will know, hey, this is a wall I can't go past. And so is this. And so is this. I can't go past trees either. Uh, I think he also can't collide with the player. I'm not sure, though. I should probably set that up if that's not the case. Um, and the nav mesh will allow him to realize, like, oh, I got to go, like, I got to kind of, like, zoom my way over here, go up, and then over. Um, I have watched some videos about it. Been a bit. That, conceptually, is going to take a while to figure out. Um, I think it's simple to set up, but then getting the code to use it, like... I don't, I don't fucking know how to do that. Uh, so we're going to figure that out eventually. Will we create fixed coordinates or implement source search? So I think first, first we're going to figure out the nest, which is like every radicate will just know where its nest is. Every radicate's going to have a nest. Uh, maybe it's going to be like one one nest will have two radicates and any number of little baby ratatas that live in it. Um, and so for that purpose, it's just going to be radicates going to be going toward a fixed coordinate all the time. But then uh, later on, which I guess we can we can add we can add this next. Um What we're what we're gonna want to do is initially we're gonna just have Radicate go to our uh hey. Firefox, you went away so well last time on your own. Uh we're gonna make Radicate go to our current like known water source and food source. Uh but after all of this is functional, we're gonna have to go and add in the fact that uh he needs to find these sources. The goal will be to have these randomly spawn around the map, and then Radicate is going to find the closest dense area of water or food and then seek it out. So so we will implement source search. It's just going to be like later on down the line. It's going to be a bit. Uh, let's go to the better Firefox view. Make it a little bigger. So let me add that in down here. And actually, let's let's do the nav mesh after we do these these easy things. These I think are all going to be achievable without too much difficulty. Um, we already made Radicate go to his nest, so I'm gonna take that off. Now we need to make him go to his water and do his food when he gets thirsty or hungry. Um, then I want to go back to the nest and make him just like disappear when he's on top of it because it's like aha, he went inside. Eventually, we'll make a, like a we'll have an animation. Probably not until I'm doing my own art and Hello. it crazy pants. Uh, we're going to move away from Pokemon art eventually. The Pokemon art is just a uh, stand-in for now. Uh, so then, for now, 
Eradicate's just going to step on top of his nest and just like disappear. And then when he's done sleeping, he will reappear. Um, so we're going to do those things. Then we'll figure out the nav mesh. Then, then I need to actually figure out how to make Radicate consume food. Uh, the goal is going to be to have a bush that has little berries on it. It only has berries when the bush like has food. So we got to figure out how to like. Actually, yeah, this this is gonna this is gonna be multiple steps. So make bush change between. Has food and doesn't. Uh, so then once we have the bush capable of being in one form where it has food and has berries on it, another form where it doesn't, then we're going to make Raticate uh, consume that food. So we're going to kind of update the, the task where he goes over to the food source. He's going to walk over to it, and then the food source is going to change from has food to doesn't have food. Or actually... We'll say has X food. It has some amount of food. And so Eradicate might not eat all the food. He might, but he might not. Uh, so we'll have to have like multiple uh, sprites for the bush so that it has uh, varying amounts of berry fullness. Uh, and then when Eradicate goes over, he'll eat some of it. And that will increase. Nope, it will decrease his food meter. Uh... He'll keep eating until he's at the point where he's like, I'm not hungry anymore. Um, and while he's eating, he will be changing the sprite uh, to have less food on it. Uh, and then after that shit, what was the thing after that? Mm. Right. Uh, searching. Searching for food. Slash water. That's going to be the next thing. <laughs> A worrying amount of berries. It'll be fine. It'll be a perfectly normal amount of berries. Don't worry. It'll be great. Eradicate is going to love it. To eradicate, there's no such thing as a worrying amount of berries. More berries is more better. Uh, so eventually what we're going to do is have some kind of search function where Radicate is going to have some kind of like, like an area around him. Uh, he'll have some kind of like hidden stat that is his uh, his sense of smell, and and it'll be that the the higher his sense of smell, the bigger the circle around him, where he can just know about the presence of berries. So, if there is uh, a spot that's close to him that has a bunch of berries, he's gonna pick that over a spot that's close to him that doesn't have that many berries. It doesn't matter how many berry bushes there are, it matters how many berries are on the bush. Um, so Radicate, Radicate's behavior tree is gonna have to have a way of figuring out, based on his sense of smell, the area in which he's going to search, more better sense of smell, wider area, uh, and then he'll collect all of the data about berry bushes and water sources inside that area. Uh, and then he'll go seek out the best spot for food or water, depending on whether he's thirsty or hungry. Um, but then we also have to keep in mind what happens if he doesn't smell anything. He's going to probably just like, I don't know, like just just fucking he's just going to walk along. He's going to walk around trying to smell every so often um, to figure out where he can go to eat or to drink. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the plan. I think that is uh, far enough in the future. Like this is, this is like five streams worth of stuff, really. Although I think, uh, I think I want to get these things done today, and then maybe we'll start on the nav mesh. But if the nav mesh is too complicated, I'll figure that out off stream, uh, and come back and just demonstrate how it works. Um, and then the, the bush stuff I'll probably do off stream as far as, um, just making some quick little, uh, little alternate sprites. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll probably go through the, uh, the headache of figuring out how to have Radicate actually consume food and search for food. On stream, I might, I might figure out the formula ahead of time for how, how we're going to weigh, uh, 
how close the source is versus how dense that source is, how full of food or water it is. Um, maybe in like an Excel spreadsheet, I'll come up with like some examples to figure out what I think will work best. And probably I'll be wrong initially. Probably we'll try something and it'll be crazy. It won't make sense. And we'll just tweak it. And that's fine. Um, okay, so shit. What are What is the first thing? We need to make Raticate go to his water and his food. Okay, so he goes to his nest. Let's get his nest down here. Let's put him uh, a little further down. Okay, so... So currently he's only going to go to his den because we're kind of cheating. The initial... The, the final plan is to have Raticate and to have him with uh, fatigue, hunger, and thirst. And every creature in the game is going to have these, and they're going to increase over time. And the each creature will kind of have its own situation. Some creatures will get hungry more often. Some creatures will get hungry less often. The, the meters will increase at different rates, um, which will give them all kind of a unique s schedule, sort of, because they're, their whole... Their, their passive actions while the player is not interacting with them is going to be fulfilling these needs. Um, for now, though, we don't actually have it set up where like needs are increasing over time at, at some kind of rate that I've chosen. The only thing we're doing right now is every five seconds, every time a five second timer runs out, we're increasing fatigue by five. So I think what we're going to do is... Uh, I think we're gonna increase, we're gonna change this and we're gonna increase thirst. No, no hunger, we're gonna do hunger, hunger second. Um, so then our current goal is just gonna be to get Raticate to go through the process he's been going through, but he's gonna go, he's gonna go to the bush instead. So I should get up, I should get my behavior tree up. This is the lore board, ignore the lore board. We want the behavior tree. Okay, so so currently, currently this is the behavior tree. It's enormous. Um, the idea is you start at the top and you go down a level and then go from left to right is the general, the general way it functions. Uh, so because needs are more important than wants, eradicates needs are on the left. Uh, and he will check to see if there's anything pressing, anything he actually needs to fulfill. He can be kind of hungry, kind of thirsty, kind of tired, not deal with it. He'll still play with his little eradicate buddies. But once he's hungry enough, thirsty enough, or tired enough, he'll be like, all right, I got to deal with this thing. Uh, which I, I think that's that makes sense. That's how I live my life. Like, I'll be hungry, but I won't do shit about it until I'm so hungry that I'm like, okay, yeah, it's uncomfortable to exist without fulfilling this need. Um, so currently, when he has a need he needs to fulfill, he'll come down to this uh, this level. And the first thing he tries to f fulfill is his fatigue. Because like, if he has low HP, it's kind of risky for him to be out in the world. He might get attacked. He might need to run. He might die. So he'll he'll deal with his fatigue first. Then, if he's not tired, but he's hungry enough, then he's going to deal with his hunger. Then, if he's not tired, not hungry, but but thirsty, then he'll deal with his thirst. And uh, so we're going to go with hunger for now. Uh, so we're going to have to go look at the hunger sequence. And we're going to start with uh, having a check to see, like, hey, is my hunger greater than 50? And, uh, okay, I lied. Actually, first, first, we need to go back to that script. And we need to change this. So we're going to add... We're gonna add five to hunger every time the timer restarts. And you know, actually, we're just gonna add 11 because that will make him, I won't have to wait as long. It's annoying to have to wait 15 seconds to see these things happen. So he's gonna start at 40. When his hunger is over 50, he's going to respond to it and try to deal with it. Um, the timer is a five second timer that resets. So this, this means he's gonna start at 40, five seconds later, it's gonna bump up to 51 and that's gonna kick everything off, kick everything into motion. Uh, so then what we need to do is one of the hunger sequence 
and then the hunger check. So I think the hunger check is basically going to be like the fucking same as a fatigue check. Just it's just hunger instead. So, uh, oh, wait, right. We need to we need to extend this script. We don't want to mess with the initial uh, the default script for a condition leaf which is that symbol is not white because it's the default script. We don't want to fuck with that. We'll fuck up every single other condition check if we do that. Ooh, auto mod caught some dumbass bot. Get fucked, bot. Nah, I'm not even going to bother reporting you. It takes too long. And they're, they're just endless. They are ceaseless. Okay, so this is just going to be a hunger 50 check. Sure. Ah, uh, no. No. Got to follow the naming convention. It is eradicate hunger 50 check um the goal of this whole thing as stated previously many times is that behavior trees are designed for you to be able to take parts of them and put them somewhere else so that you can um nearly automate the creation of more and more similar but not exactly the same creatures um so for now everything that i'm doing i'm always going to put eradicate on the tag uh with the idea that if i make another creature uh like a like a Gyarados or something, or an Arcanine. We will just essentially duplicate this whole tree, but if we want to make them work differently, we will use different scripts. Like maybe Gyarados gets hungry faster, uh, which actually I think it's hunger check would still be the same. So it may actually be pointless for me to be calling this Raticate. Maybe every single creature is going to deal with their hunger when it's over 50. Maybe we'll have some creatures deal with it when it's over 60 or 70 or we have a uh, like a snorlax and he deals with his hunger when it's over 10 because he just fucking eats he just eats bro okay so anyway that that's why we're calling it eradicate hunger 50 check um okay so then what we want to do is just paste the fatigue check um and what we want to do is we will be putting onto the blackboard uh the blackboard is what a behavior tree uses uh, it's to store variables. So if you have a behavior tree and you put a variable on the blackboard, every single part of the behavior tree can see that thing without you having to worry about like the scope. The scope is that any part of the behavior tree can see that variable. Um, so what it's going to do is grab the hunger value from the blackboard and. Ooh, let's see. So previously we were printing success and a number when we got to what we wanted, but that's gonna be annoying to have both hunger and fatigue have their, have the same result. So maybe what we do since we're dealing with hunger, we're gonna print success H2 or failure H2. Um, we're still gonna have success one, which is the very initial check uh, for any need being above 50. That's still going to say success one. But what we should see after that is once that hits success one, then we should also see success two uh, because success H2, which would be letting us know that it's your hunger that has uh, that is above that is above 50. Um, and we're also going to print the hunger value after that just to just to make sure just so we can see what's going on, because uh, the, the more the more you can see, the sooner you can figure out how you fucked up. And boy, you're gonna, if, if you're me, you're gonna fuck up. Um, okay, so that should just handle the hunger check. Um, so then what's also important is not just is my hunger above 50, but also is my hunger greater than my thirst? Because if the thirst is greater than hunger, then it's a more important need. If they're tied, deal with deal with hunger first. But if if thirst is just like if you're crazy thirsty, like you got to go drink, you know, you don't you fucking you can't function if you're dehydrated. Doesn't matter if you have all the HP or food in the world. If you're dehydrated, you're not going to have a good time. Um, OK, so then we're just going to come back and copy the fatigue greater than thirst check. And we're going to extend this script. We're going to name it eradicate. Probably just hunger thirst check. Shit. Accidentally deleted the T. Uh, probably just eradicate hunger thirst check. You can't have the symbols. It's kind of annoying. It's fine. Shit. Which, which is control V. Are you control V? Gotcha. Okay. Ugh. 
Okay, so we extend condition leaf, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's the other, here's the thing we need to check. So we're checking if hunger is greater than thirst. And if we're successful, we're actually just going to print H3 or failure H3. Uh, the number changes because the fatigue check, since it happens earlier in the tree, first you check is fatigue over 50, then you check fatigue versus hunger, then you check fatigue versus thirst. Uh, now that we're in the, the middle section of this tree, we only have to check first is hunger above 50, and then we know we're only in this section if fatigue is not above 50, so we don't have to worry about comparing hunger and fatigue. Uh, so we only compare hunger above 50 and then hunger versus thirst. Um, okay. Okay. So that's good. Now, once we've succeeded at both of these, then we move on, right? So essentially we're in here. This, this section of the behavior tree is a sequence, which means it wants to do all these things. Uh, it wants to succeed at all of these things. So this will succeed when hunger is above 50. And then it'll move on. And then this will succeed when hunger is greater than thirst. And then it'll move on. For now, we're skipping this. The, the process where he finds his best food source. That's going to be a thing that he needs to do. He's going to break out that powerful nose. Figure out where the hell he's got to go. Uh, for now, he's just going to have a designated food source. This will be him choosing like my, my like food source. But for now, he's just going to have a dedicated one. He's a he's a simple eradicate. He lives by himself on an island with nobody else but him. Oh, and, and the player character. The player character's not doing anything right now. So he can just go to his same berry bush every fucking time he's hungry. Um, so in the hunger selector, he's going to check if he's at that food source. If he is, then then this is a success and he just goes to eat some food. If he checks to see if he's at the food source and he's not, then he's going to move on to this and he's going to try to do this. Um, this thing is a selector. Selectors are like the opposite of a sequence. A selector will only do all of its things. It just looks for one success. Sequence tries to do to tries to succeed at everything. A hunger selector tries to do its first thing. If that succeeds, boom, he's done. He's like, I'm fine. If it fails, then he goes on to the next thing, tries to succeed at that. Um, so there, always one of these will be able to succeed. Either yes, I'm at my best food source. If not, then I need to go to that food source. E either way, no matter what, he can do one of those two things. Um, okay, so that, that's what we got to work on. And... I think for now... Ooh. So for now, I'm not sure if I actually want to just delete this and have it not be there. Or actually, no, okay, no, because we don't have the check in here. So that's that should be fine. We just do this. We assume his only food source currently is his best food source. Then later, we go in and we add in... The, the task where he checks and designates something as his best food source. Okay, so I think I think the way to do that first is to give Radicate a variable that is his throw best food source. You throw the cheese. You don't you don't tell me to throw the cheese. Radicate doesn't eat cheese. Radicate eats berries. Go make me a throw the berries emote. Soundbite. So how the how do we how do we how do we do this? So I think what we want to do is of course we want to extend this. We want to extend the script. It's gonna be eradicate at best food source check. Yes. No chess. <laughs> um and then so this is going to be similar. And we're just gonna copy the at nest check. Whoop. This is going to be similar to the at nest check, but not the same. So, uh, we are gonna, this is gonna be success. Uh, nope, not F, that's fatigue. This is gonna be H4 or failure H4. Success H4, or failure H4. But it's not gonna be if he's at home, 
right? It's going to be if he's at a food source. So we need to go to Radicate script because he's the actor. This is referring to the actor. Sorry, Radicate is the actor. This refers to the actor. So that this function needs to be in the Radicate script. So let's go there. Nope. That's the wrong one. That's the old one that I should probably delete. Okay, so we have this function is at home. Throw the ch ch oh shit. <laughs> Else open, I mean berries. Uh, T worm. Thanks for being a fifteen month there, dude. Also, thank you for that lovely, the lovely Brian. I don't even know. Did you not mean to put else? Yeah, what should it, what should that have been? Throw the and then the weird noises. Should just been ah right e e's right because you're finishing cheese. Okay, sure. Damn yeah, you fucked that up, bro. You could subscribe at a higher tier, and maybe it would let you announce it again. I don't. I don't know though. I don't know if the, I don't know how that works. I've never done that. Next month. Okay. Yeah. Write it down. Shit. Okay. So, so we need another function, like is at home. But it's not gonna be is at home. It's gonna be is at. best food source uh and then also that's gotta you gotta back that up so then then we need to give him a food source so like is at home checks to see if the current building he's in is is his home right that's that's pretty fucking easy um So what we want. Hmm. Okay, so we're, we're going we're gonna to test this out and make it comparable. We're going to make it exact, like just like a, a tweaked version of is at home. But we might have to tweak it more because for, for the nest, he can walk on top of it. There's no collision. He just gets on top of it and then it's like he disappears as if he like went down into the hole. The bush, he's not going to be able to get on top of. He'll he'll go next to it, but he's not going to go on top of it. So... Uh, I don't know if the is at function will work when he's next to it, but not on top of it. There might be like some kind of range we can work in so that if he's within a space, uh, within like he's on the, he's adjacent to it, it'll count. It might already do that, actually. Um, I'm not really sure. Fuck. Okay, let's go back to eradicate. Uh, scripts. Okay. So. Uh, so how to do this? Hmm. Cause it won't. It won't be a building. Should he have, like... What if he had a location? Prop. Okay, so... Building also should be a prop, though. Right, yeah, we had talked about this, about how to uh, kind of formalize and organize all of the things in the world. Um, and I, ooh, 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 how do we do this? So, yeah, I'm still, I'm still uncertain. <laughs> 
I think even if we make them all part of the same group, they still need to function differently. Um, because the berry bush is going to have collision and I need to know if I'm next to it, not actually at it. So, like conceptually, what the what the hell do we do with that? We could make every berry bush have an area around it that's like a a building. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. We could... Now, instead of it being every berry bush, what if we have old Radicate here? He chooses his, his best spot, which we're skipping that for now. But what if part of choosing your best... best area to go to, the best bush to seek out, what if Radicate himself defined an area around it that's like the the best bush area because then we don't have to have every single bush having that area defined it would just be each radicate would be defining one little area that it's seeking out and then then we check am i in that area okay, yes, I am, then I can eat berries and we can take berries off the bush and lower Radicate's hunger meter. Some Something like that. Okay. Fuck. Um... How... How would I do that? It's gonna just be a variable, I guess. And I guess it's going to be... Oh, God damn. Is it gonna be like an array? It could be... Okay, so... Like what the what the fuck are we trying to do here? What am I trying to do? Yeah, exactly. So okay, hold on. Let me just let's just open paint. Okay, so. So we have we have bush. It looks like a tree. Whatever. Whatever. So around this bush, this this area around the bush. We need to essentially be able to, like, designate this area as, as a building. Oh my god. How do you... I can't. Nope. U-I-L-D-I-N-G. There we go. Or even if we don't designate it as an area we or as a building, we need some way to designate this as an area so that Radicate will know when when he's inside of it. The idea being that anytime Radicate is inside of it, he can stop trying to get closer to the berry bush and just eat berries from here. Maybe maybe Radicate comes in from here and he decides he'll stop here. Maybe he comes in from down here and he decides, okay, I'll stop right here. Maybe he comes in from down here and he decides, okay, I'll stop right here. So we just we we need this area to be something that radicate is aware of and so i think it might end up being like one well, there might be an easy built-in function to just get to get like an array of coordinates like like cuz it essentially if we have the coordinates of each corner, right? Which I assume you can store as an array. That def those four corners define this area. And then we would know if Radicate's inside if we could turn this into this shape 
or I guess if even if you can't, we could do math. We could we could use Radicate's position. Hey, Booski. Like a bit box for berry picking. Hitbox, yes. Yeah, essentially. Like if he's in this area, then then he can he can eat berries from the tree. And if he's not in this area, he needs to get into this area before he can eat berries from the tree. And that is his goal, to eat berries from the tree. Um so currently I feel like what we would do is get the get the coordinates of these four points. This would be like X2. Oh my god. My I can't I can't write with the mouse. Y2. Down here, maybe like you're gonna be X4. Y4. Over here would be X3. Y3. Uh, and then whatever Radicate's position is, we could calculate whether it's inside of here or not. But I feel like there's some built in tool we could use to do this. Be better to place a site into Radicate as a collide area. collision area well okay so so my only problem with with doing that which i th i think there is a way to do it like that i don't think we have to do all this weird math i think a, a, the point of godot being a game engine is to mainly avoid you having to do this weird math unless you're trying to do some weird shit this might be weird shit but i think it's normal enough that we can figure out how to do it with built-in tools um so sure if if we could if we could make this space then into an object, then we could figure out if Radicate is colliding with it. And when Radicate collides with it, then we could update the um update Radicate's area, letting him know like, hey, I can I'm next to the uh the berry bush. And so maybe that's the way to do it, is we don't even we don't necessarily like we have a variable for radicate that's just like am i colliding with berry bush area and then like if yes okay then i can eat berries hmm fuck okay okay how would we do this we could just always We could, <laughs> yeah. Radicate could just always have like a weird object, a weird little like area that we constantly move and redefine. And every time he sniffs, He's gonna he's gonna define it. If he doesn't smell any food, it gets defined as like a zero, uh, the a, a box like this where all of the coordinates, like everything, is just zero. The size of it is just zero. So then he can't collide with it. But if he sniffs and he smells a berry on a bush, then he, if, if let's say he just smells one berry on one bush, there's no other options then he we redefine that shape to be around that bush and then he can go to that shape well i guess he can go to the bush and then when he is overlapping that shape he knows he's there and he can eat god i feel like there's an easier way to do that um maybe he can just Okay, maybe it's as simple as we can choose a bush and then we can check to see if he's within within range of that. Yeah, yeah, Derek, I, I think I think Googling that specific thing is the thing to do. Um, well, like, what do I what do I want to do here? Like. 
You go to for check if object is near another object. How to tell if an object is looking at another object? Um, not looking, just uh, in the in the vicinity. Hmm. Actually, wait, hold on. Did does that other dude's code just have this in it? I feel like that other dude's the the other guy's code, Liam Flannery. I feel like he just has that in here somewhere. Um Shit, I feel like when he enters a building or leaves it no. Maybe it's in the actor script. Yeah, he checks to see if a building is in range if the position to that building is less than one. Is at least I think what's happening. So if we run this guy's little game, his example, the guy's working, you make it nighttime, he's gonna walk and go to sleep. Um So I think before the guy disappears, the game is checking to see if the distance between the little moving guy and the building he's going to is less than one. And if that's the case, then it updates to say, okay, you're in this building, disappear from the game world, and then I'll put this silly little extra animation like you're sleeping. And then same same thing going to work. When he gets close enough, when he gets close enough, it makes him disappear. Okay, so I, I, I feel like we can use that. And actually... I feel like maybe what I should do is go back to go back to the nest thing and figure out how to ba -da -ba -ba. I, I feel like I should do this first actually I don't, I don't know why I was doing this out of order um I think we should just we should finish up the nest stuff because then I will learn how to do this I think Possibly. Very likely. But maybe not. Um, so then actually, let me change this back. I'm going to change this back to fatigue. Uh, the, the parts further down the behavior tree that we were working on shouldn't be affected by this. Um, so that should be fine. Uh, we'll leave the is best food source here. We still need to finish this, though. Um... Finish this section by designating a best berry bush location. Um. Uh, okay. So. Uh, so now what we're trying to do is make it so that Radicate goes and stands on top of the nest, which he will, and when he gets close, he disappears. So where is that exactly handled? So he writes he writes a function called in range. So then we probably want to do that same thing. We probably want to nope, go to scripts, buddy. Uh, we probably want an in range function. And where to put that? I guess probably like right next to home is at home. We'll check to see if you're in range of your home. And then... And then the thing that's right after it is checking to see if you are at home. If my current building is my home, I'm at home. Sure, that seems like a sensible place to put it. Okay, so... We're gonna have to adjust this. But I, I also, before doing that, I don't understand it fully. So what I wanna do is find where this is used which we were just there. 
Um, is it for exiting the building? How about for traveling to work? Checks to see if you're at work. If you're not at work, then it's going to make you walk to work. And the first step is coming out of a building, then going into a building. Okay. So I think it's going to be in the part where you enter the building. Interesting. If it's in range of a building, fail. Is that because you should be in the building, not in range of it? Okay, let's go back to the fucking walk to the building. Okay, we're walking to the building. So you have a target building. If you're going to walk home, your target building is home. If you're going to walk to work, your target building is work. Okay. If the actor is in range of target building's position, then set the value for target building to target building and return success. Interesting. And then if not, you're going to be moving toward that target building's position. And return running. So sure, okay, that that part makes fucking sense. If you're not if you're not there, walk there. And while you're walking there, kind of halt the behavior tree. Let the behavior tree know, okay, I'm, we're doing something. We're moving this guy toward the building. Don't, don't get this other part. So if he's in range of target building's position, and in range is defined in the actor script as being like less than one unit away, and you're setting the blackboard value of target building to target building. Why not set the blackboard value of target building to like current building or something? I guess because it's still the target building because you're not in it yet. Okay, right, because this is just walking to it. And then the actual enter building action. If the blackboard has a target building. Return failure. That seems... Like, what? If the actor is in range... If target building's position also return failure. Then actor enter building, target building. You're trying to enter the target building. And then you're erasing target building. Okay, so that makes sense. Like you made it, you got there. You don't, you no longer have a target building. You don't have a target in mind anymore. Your target was home. You walked home. You got inside your home. Great, you are home. You no longer have a target. The failures are weirding me out. Also, shit, what does the exclamation point mean? That that might be very important. Oh. Google. Google, you are not helping me right now. Okay, fine. I will word it more like a sentence. What does mean, what does exclamation point mean in Godot? 
What does the cash sign mean? God damn it, Google. Google feels like a negligent parent. All right. You were fucking... It's not an operator. What is it doing here? Is it like the... I don't know. It's it, So it is like inverting something? It makes what's true false and false true? Bool inversion. Cool. Okay, well, that would make... That makes this make sense, then. So, and then what this really means if, is if the blackboard doesn't have a target building, then say that this failed. If the actor is not in range of the target building, say that this failed. And then only if those things are not, are, don't happen. So then if there, there is a target building, and if the target is in range of that building, then enter the building and erase your target building value. Okay. Well, that's annoying that that didn't come up from a Google search. Derg, thank you for being here. My God. Wow, yeah, I, I would have to uh, try really hard to coax that answer out of Google. Google is just, like, <laughs> has no idea. Like, oh, he put a weird exclamation point there. Let's just let's just fucking ignore that. Dirk colon exists. That's that's all you have to do, man. Exist and type into chat. Steph, oh, thanks, Dirk. Uh, shit. It's more like Dirk colon exists and shares basic obvious knowledge that. Seth can't find on Google because Seth doesn't know how to Google. <sighs> okay. So this is like, this is quite a thing. This is a big pile of things to uh, deal with. And I'm not quite sure how to do this, but that's, that's what we're going to fucking figure out. Hmm. Flow chart. Not well, not yet. I feel like I need to I need to keep studying this. Like it makes sense. I can make sense of each individual part, but understanding exactly like all of the pieces that need to be there and then how to transfer that over to my fucking situation is uh is a bit much. Okay, so Write an algorithm in natural language. I don't even think I'm there yet. I think I need to, to look back through that again and figure out all the pieces. Okay. So let's go back to the character. <sighs> okay, so the character has... current building that it's in now oh shit do I actually want to do that like I don't know if eradicate actually needs to be in a building we might just make him invisible shit but then things might run into him um, actually, 
I don't know how hide works. If hide prevents him from colliding with anything, then I think just hiding him is good enough. Um, I think for now we're just going to hide him and then we'll figure out a smarter way to do that later. Okay, so we already have a home. We don't need a work location. And we don't need, like, icons. We're just going to make Raticate invisible. Oh, that would be very cute, though, to have little Zs coming out of the, um, the den. Oh, maybe we should do that. That's so cute. And then also it would tell the player that there's a Raticate in there that he could wait for to come out. If, uh, if the player really wanted to catch Eradicate. Oh, shit. Okay, maybe I want to do that. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Maybe next time. Okay, so when, is it, when, when this character is readied, they hide those icons. And then... don't know what this is doing connecting to some kind of cooldown probably because there's supposed to be like a little pause in between when the character goes inside of a building and when the z's appear so if you just spammed it back and forth between day and night and day and night and day and night you might be able to get a bunch of z's appearing and the goal is for there to be some kind of cooldown And if they have a current building, they enter that current building. Right, so that they start off inside something. Okay, okay. And so then... We, we do kind of want an enter building function in that... We want to hide Raticate when he, like, enters the nest. And if he enters a building, this character's global position gets set to that building's global position. Okay. I don't know if we need to worry about that. Like, the, the go-to function kind of handles that like eradicate's going to stop right on top of that then the character gets hidden so oh my god this is surprisingly complicated to think about and then it sets the current building as eradicate's building Sure, sure. It is. Yeah, it seems it seems so simple to, to to think about conceptually. All we want to do is fucking. He already walks on top of the nest. When he's on top of the nest, just fucking disappear, bro. Okay, we're not gonna worry about exiting a building. Ooh, other than the fact that it should make him appear. Okay, okay. We'll handle that after. First, entering the building. So I think what we do is we just have a function. Okay, so yeah, actually for now, I'm gonna take this out. Let's, let's go with this bit by bit. For now, we're gonna have a function that's not gonna do anything, but we'll make it do something in a little bit. It's just gonna be this enter building function. So when our Raticate enters a building, I think all we need to hide him. We have a funk scion. Oh my god. That sounds like a fun name for a video game. Some kind of weird, like, rhythm game. Funk scion? Sounds fucking cool. Like, it's like, like high fantasy, dark fantasy, but also, like, funk music. Ooh.
Okay, so... So now when he enters the building, we know to hide him. The only problem is... We... We haven't... We need to put in the logic to call this function. And... Do we actually need this? Like, what? Because Raticate only has one building he's ever going to go into. We don't need to be, like, changing. We don't need to leave this open to be, like, redefining what building he's going into. But I guess, right, we are going to be checking to see if he's close to his nest, which is a building. So, okay. We'll leave that there for now, but we might only need it. Be this guy might need this. Liam Flannery might have needed this in his code because he's setting his character's position equal to the position of a building and then defining, hey, the current building you're in is that is a building. But if we're not going to do that, we might not need it. I don't know. Maybe we can leave it there and it won't be a problem. Um, okay, so for now, our only goal is to get him to disappear when he goes and steps onto the nest. And then we will get him to reappear as a separate exercise. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the enter building function and he'll hide. So now we need to... Hmm, we, we need to go to the rest action. Or shit, maybe the go to nest action? Okay, the idea is... Go to the behave tree. Okay, so the idea is he does some checks, and he checks to see if he's at his nest. And that I feel like we actually need to be messing with right now. Although shit, maybe not. We, we have the is at home check. So shoot. Yeah, actually I didn't. Uh... I didn't check to see, do we get success five? Because I may I may just not have finished this. I think we don't get success five. I think that is what I need to do. Also, please jump by 11. I believe that should, that should be saved. Okay, so he immediately, so we do get failure five. Okay, so great. I just need a check to, uh, to say that he's at home. Okay, so... So shit, let's... Let's undo that for now. So we need to... We need to, we need to get him to be at home. So let's go look through this guy's code. So, uh, the is at home function is very simple. It's just, is your current building home? So then we need to, we, Radicate needs to have a current building. So, okay. For sure, Radicate needs to have a current building. Uh, I don't even know if it needs to be. Ah, nope. I already literally read it. Wrote it a line below. I don't think it needs to be exported because we're not going to be tweaking with it uh, in the inspector. It's just going to be updated by code. So his current building needs to be a building. And how how is current building defined initially?
Hmm. Don't understand this. Okay, so the current building is a variable. It needs to be a building. When the ready function happens, you hide some things. And then you have if current building. Enter building current building. Is this start filled in? Um, let me go to the character. Okay, so he does start with a chosen current building. Okay. Uh, so this was a problem that I was thinking about last time, which is that we need him to not have a current building. Or I need him to have, like, the, his current building as, like, the world. Hmm. Eh. Fuck. Okay. How, how do? I guess it's just okay if it stays empty. As long as we, ooh, half me? Oh, yeah, a little bit. I have to be like perfect posture, like exactly in the right spot for the fish eye to work. And it sucks if I, like those medieval moons, oh my God. If I reduce the zoom on the fish eye, it doesn't distort my face as much. So if I reduce the zoom, more of my face is visible, but you don't get the fun, like weird effect. It's such a like damned if you do, damned if you don't situation maybe maybe i could do some like maybe there's some kind of like face tracking algorithm for the uh that i could like use my graphics card or something to do i have i have seen scripts that say they can do that, that they can like track your face i don't know if they work though or how intensive they are you're content okay great You are the primary user of the fish eye. By pleasing you, I am pleasing most of the customer base. Now, if we could please everybody, that would be perfect, but it's hard to it's hard to get feedback. It's it's infrequent. God, conceptualizing this is so hard. So we need a current building. And you know what? I don't know. Why don't do we just export it? No, maybe not. Or maybe. Who cares? Fine. Sure. Please do not send feedback forms to your email. <sighs> Don't worry. You're, you're not. You're fine. You're not getting any. You give me the feedback here. It's all good. So we need a current building. So we can define a current building. So. At some point. We have to define his the building that he's in. So. That is done here. With enter building. And really, maybe we just fudge this and we don't ever actually need Radicate to enter the building. We just check to see if he's in range. And then if he's in range, we hide him. Okay. And so this was the thing that I had deleted earlier. I knew I would need it again. So... Uh, we're using building position as a vector two.
And then, what, this function only succeeds when the distance to a building is less than one. So... We want to make the building home. It's not just whatever building is your target. Oh, unless we want this to work with other stuff. Damn. Uh, so if I want this to function with getting food or getting water, then we would either need a different function for those situations, or we try to use this function to do everything, which is what Liam Flannery's example does. That's why it's using like target building or building position. Oh, okay, first we just make it work for home. Get that understanding, then make it work for everything. Hopefully that's not insane. Okay, so if we go back and look at his example. What? Where is he discussing building position? And then I'm assuming that this position is just the actor's position. Checking if the, the distance to the distance from the building position to the actor's position is less than one. So we go into the script where he's walking into a building. There's a target building. You go to actually enter the building. Okay, so here's target building again. I'm trying to just figure out like how exactly this is created and used. And at the end it erases the value. So where is it setting this value? Over here. Actor is in range of target building's position. Okay. Here's where it's defined. Great. So if the actor is walking home, target building is defined as equal to actor.gethome. So then we look back at character and the actor get home thing is in here somewhere. Should just be function get home. There we go. And it just returns home as its value. So this feels like a migraine. Oh my God, dude, Saturday. I don't know if I get migraines, but Saturday I had like the worst, just a ceaseless pressure and pain in my head. It fucking sucked. It just like ruined like six hours of my fucking weekend. It was so annoying. And most of the time I get headaches if I like close my eyes, like take some take some pain pain reliever, like and go lay down. Like I'm fine. This is just like relentless. No matter what I did, I felt like shit. It was fucking crazy. So anyway, compared to that, this feels great. But. You know, Derek, if this is if this is migraine inducing for you, feel free to step away. How, how okay, how is this being used? How this seems this seems so weird that it's all set up this way. Like I don't understand it. I get the idea. He's setting up the target building 
as it's as whatever the home is. You can choose home from a drop down list for the character. He doesn't the person who made this doesn't know if you chose the orange house or the blue house. It defaults to one, but you can switch it. So then the code has to has to go and check like, hey, OK, if you want to go home, then I need to ask the actor, where is his home? What, tell me your home. OK, it's that building. That building is now the target building. OK. So uh, I guess we could just use this code. Sorry for the headache you had to test putting the voodoo doll in the microwave. Oh, my God. Bro, I'd be fucking dead. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so then let's let's try this. Let's try just copying this actual thing. Since I don't fully understand it. Um, not really sure where to put it, but we're going to just keep putting all the things related to home in one spot. So I guess shit, we're going to need a target, ver a target building variable, right? Whoops. That's my desktop. You can't just, you can minimize when you've got them both up. You can minimize to get to the other one, but when only one's up, you can't just minimize, bro. Um, so you have a current building, you have a home, you have a work location. So, you, okay, so the, the character itself doesn't actually have a target building. It's pretty easy to disable the mechanism that only lets, lets a microwave run if the door's closed. If you want to try putting your head in there, you hear it's not recommended. Yeah, Timur, if you want to try it, you can get back to us. But yeah, I don't think I would ever try that. And yeah, I have heard that too. I can't remember from who, though. It was from like some dumb YouTube video where somebody was testing something and was like, don't do this, but it's pretty easy to do this. Maybe it was like a slow-mo guys and they were like microwaving something and filming it. I don't fucking know. It was something like that. It had the guise of it being educational content. We definitely watched the same video. Maybe. That's pretty vague. But based on our previous discussion about YouTube viewing habits, it could very well be the same video. South Park did an episode on that. Oh my God. Of course they did. Okay, so target building does not exist as a variable in the character actor script. So... God. So now when we need to call for it, we can get our home. Right, and it's just called home, lowercase h-o-m-e, yep, okay. Okay. So then... The video is, I tested the limits of a microwave by Mr. Green Guy. Now that's not familiar. Microwaves are not, not as dangerous as you may think. Let me demonstrate. I've got this light. Hmm... Okay, yeah, I have watched this. All right. I don't know who Mr. Green Guy is, but apparently I've seen one of his videos. Weird. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Fucking... So what I need to do is go here. We can now get our home. And then... And then... We're gonna set our target building to our home. Okay. And we don't need an if statement right now. 
because of the way we've divided up this behavior tree. Ooh, although, okay, so the goal of a behavior tree is to have parts you can take out and put in elsewhere. And this is really nice because he probably has the same script like twice. One in the work section and one in the like home section. And it can just be this thing twice. Because of the way he's formatted it. Okay, that's too complicated for me right now. We're, g we're gonna go with just making it work, and then, then I'll decide if that is worth fixing later. So... Uh, how... Oh, VLC crashed. VLC... Don't you do that. Don't send that bug. Okay. Okay, how the fuck do I do this? So we can now we can now get our target building. And I guess that's how we're going to decide if we're even there. Right? So The at-home check is current building. Shit. So we need to make a target building. Then we need to see if we are close to that target building and if we are close enough to it, we set that target building to our current building. And that should all be happening as part of this. As part of the at nest check. So... Okay, so I'm just gonna add a note that is at home checks current building equal to to home so first we need to get a target building then we need to see if we are close to that target building And then... If we are close to the target building, then set target building to current. Okay. So... Uh... So this achieves what we want, right? Because what this is going to do is check if actors at home. And right now that just, that never happens. We never succeed at that because it's impossible. We haven't put in the functionality to have that happen. So then it fails. And then the nice thing is that that's what we actually want currently, because then then Raticate will try to go to his nest. He'll he'll run the next script and he'll go to his nest. And then ideally, once it comes back to this, if when we have this functionality put in here, it will actually decide, okay, I am at home, and then this will print success. So then we need to add in all of this functionality. So we need to get a target building. So let's do that. I still have the code on my clipboard. So, uh, okay, so we're going to need a variable here called target building, uh, target building, and it's a building. 
Wouldn't you believe? I'm going to blow your mind. A target building is a building. Okay, so our target building is our home. This function get home is going to give us that target building. Then, then we see if we're close to that. So, uh, so the way that he does that here is by using the uh, function that he put in the actor script for in range. So he just says like, yeah, if the actor's in range of the target building's position, you're good. That looks nice and clean here because it's all dealt with elsewhere. Um, okay, so then what, what do we want to do with that? We want that. And then... If this is true... So if this is true, then we would be setting target building to current building, is the idea. And right, I need a colon. Sorry, buddy. Um, okay. If it's in range, then we're going to do a thing. We're just going to set. Oh, we're going to make target. Bill, actually, no, actually, it's the other way. We want to we want to turn. Shit. OK, we want current building. To equal target building, but I feel like. This is, uh, I'm, I'm doing this in an inefficient way. Like, first of all, this is wrong. I need to like reference the, the current building value for the actor. But I think there's an even simpler way to do this because all we need to do is get at home triggered. We need to trigger at, we need is at home to be made true. So let me go back and look at Radicate. No, nope, not that one. Okay. So is at home will be true if we just get current building set to be home. Okay. So... Uh... So if actor is in range, then we would just turn actor current building into target building. Oh my God. Okay. This is like, if somebody who knew what they were doing was looking at this, they would be like, oh my God. I, I feel like I've taken three lefts instead of a right multiple times while doing this. And I think it's, it's again, because the, the way that the other example is set up is to have this be multifunctional. It's dynamic, and I don't really need that yet. But I guess I'll settle for just trying to get this working. So once we have in range functioning, if the actor is in range of its target building, which is its home, then it will set current building to home. 
We'll set current building to target building and target building is home. And once that happens, when we check is at home, it should function. Ooh, but maybe not. Hold on. Um, okay, you know what? Let's just... Let's have a target building up here. And then let's... Just... Do this. Let's set actors target building. Let's just keep... Let's keep doing it... Let's not have a target building in here. Will you get you shouldn't get mad if I delete this, right? Because now we're only talking uh, you will. You will. Okay. So set actor target building. Shoot, this should work, right? You're going to get your home value and make that into the actor target building variable. And then if you're in range of your target building's position, great. Okay. So that should function. And we're still just using one target building that's defined in the actor script, just in case we need to reference that for something else. Um, so now we just need to make sure the in range function works correctly in here. And by works correctly, I mean like it needs to exist and work. It currently does not exist. And then we go back to this. If the actor is at home, then we go on to the next section. Right. No, because this is a selector. So the next section, if if the at nest check succeeds, then actually we go to the rest action. And that I don't have defined yet. And that's just going to be eradicate like height being hidden. So. Guess what we want to do. Let's let's do that right now. So putting Radicate at the beginning of these was a terrible idea because like all you only see a short section of the name and I just Radicate is taking that up. Should have put it at the end. Oh, well. Okay, so what Radicate? What do we want you to do here? We want to, let's see, let's go and take, let's take the go to nest action and just take that. So, uh, what do we, we just wanna like hide you? Cause we're, we're only here, we've already determined that we're in range. Which I, I guess I'm, I'm skipping that hard part. I should just go deal with that. And then, like, all we want to do is, like, like, do I need to put, like, actor hide? Whoa. And then... And then just, like, return success, probably? Shit. Uh, um... <laughs> hmm... Like, the rest action will only occur if everything else lines up. It only happens if he's ready to rest. So we don't need to do any kinds of checks. He just needs to rest. Oh, and then we probably want to, like, lower his fatigue. Okay. Okay. that why are you mad why are you mad here
Found identifier instead. Expected end of statement after expression. Found identifier instead. Now. Son of a bitch. This seems so simple. Don't want to return running. I want to return success. You need to be indented. So I don't even need to have an if statement in here. It's just just like do that thing. Do I even need to have actor hide? Can I just have hide? Then also, do I not need a colon after that? God. Oh. I'm gonna learn this stuff at some point. No, because show doesn't need to have it. And it's not mad about that there. Why? Why mad? Why mad? Okay, hold on. You know what? Like, if I just copy this entire thing, will you be mad still? Okay, so you're not mad about this. Take off that, you're still fine. Um, and you know what? I do actually want to print a success, so we should print success six, I suppose. I want to hide the actor. Okay. So hide is probably not found in action leaf, so it's like, I don't know what to do. So if we do actor hide, you should be okay with that because we're hiding the actor. The actor script has that that's fine okay so what if i take out the if because there's no if situation here expected end of statement after expression oh right well first of all we don't want actors at home right because we know he's at home i just i just do these things just do these things for me my god, did they just need to be indented again? No. Now it's all fine. I don't understand. Okay, alright. I'm just I'm happy it's not mad at me anymore. I was probably doing something painfully obvious. Um. Okay, so now the idea is that Raticate will be hidden. We'll print a success number and we will return success, which is what we want to do. Um... Ooh, we should probably also lower fatigue. So... Okay, no, we'll just do this for now because then after that I need to think about how exactly I want to lower fatigue, like eradicate sleeping, so like it's got to take some time. But then... Then what after that? We just fully zero out his fatigue? The idea being that he would rest until he's... until he's ready to go? Even if he was like hungry or thirsty enough... Like, he could go in with being almost hungry or almost thirsty enough to uh, to need to go deal with those. But because he's a little bit more tired, he goes in and then rests. And I guess it would make sense. He would rest until he's nearly fully rested. Then he's going to come out and go deal with his hunger or thirst. Okay. So we will just, like, clear off all of his fatigue. We'll essentially reset the meter. Um... Okay, for now, we're just going to get this to function, but then after that, we're going to change this to have like a running function where we're... Hmm. Maybe the idea is like we make a timer on the fly 
if he goes in with like 60 fatigue, we set up a timer that's like, okay, for every point of fatigue, this timer needs to grow. And that's how long you're going to stay in here. While that timer's running down, we'll return running because the, the behavior tree should be stuck, like letting him sleep. And then once that timer is over, then we return success and probably unhide him because now he's slept and he has emerged. And now he can go on to do whatever else he's got to do. Okay. Okay. So, shoot, I'm going to... Let's bring up Firefox. Let's make a note of that. So we're going to make Raticate disappear. Um, we're going to make Raticate's fatigue lower over time. And then we're going to make Raticate... Ooh, and... Uh, behave tree set to running. And we're going to make Raticate reappear. Reappear on nest and tree returns success. Okay. Step at a time. Step at a time. Okay. So now we can go do the thing that I was putting off doing, which is that we need to figure out the... Oh my god, where are you? Uh, the in-range function? Yeah, we need to figure out the in-range function. Because right now we have, like, if this thing is... If Raticate is in range of its nest, then do some stuff. And we currently have no way of actually telling the game that Raticate is, in fact, in range. Not player. Raticate. Mm. Make sure. Okay, so we. This is the function we need to make fucking work. So it's going to take building position. And then it's only going to return a value if this is less than one. If you're building position, if the distance, the distance to is this just the actor's position? I guess so, since we're in the actor script that it is just position. So the distance to the actor's position from the building's position is less than one. It will return a value or it will return success. Or I guess it returns true. Because we need this to be true. Okay. So we need a building position, but we should. Hmm. Okay. So we need a building position. That's all that we need. This thing should function and we might need to tweak this value. Maybe one is not the right thing, but we need a building position. So let me see. We definitely already looked at this, but we got to look at it again. So, okay, just to double check, you don't have a variable for building position, right? That was the thing that I looked at. And then building position was actually determined within a script down here, either the walk to building action. No. Enter building? Hmm. OK. 
Okay, wait, hold on. Could... Shit, yeah, how does this function without having building position to defined? Copy this straight out of this guy's script. Let me go back and make sure. It was the in range thing. You're using building position as a vector too, and it looks like you convert it to a bool. I don't really understand that. Like a, a bool is like yes or no, like a zero or a one. Hmm. Turn building position dot distance to position. So is the idea that this is going to be zero if it's true, one if it's not. And then that's, you only get a return value if zero is less than one because this is a bool. I don't really fully understand that. But I think I can, because I'm using it in the exact same way, I think I can still utilize it as a tool, but where the fuck does building position come from? I swear I found it before. Is it global position? Is building global position. That's when you enter a building. Um. Oh yeah, right. And when I select, a, when I select a, like a variable, it'll highlight every other instance of that variable, and it is nowhere to be found. So then, that means that wherever the fuck this in range thing is used which is in here. Like, how do you, how do you not have a building position? Backward get value, target building dot position. You're not using that specific variable. Hmm. Can't like control click on you to find out where you're defined, right? Is this, God, is this just where it's defined? Is that? Son of a bitch. Damn, yeah, I like fully don't, I don't understand how this is being utilized. Like, it feels like this is just not. Not fully defined, like if it's, if it's being defined here and you're just saying like, okay. Building position is a vector too. And then if the position 
the character's position and some specific building's position, the distance between those things is less than one. Then like return return true or return a value for this. So what is the what is the way that he uses it? It's specifically in the go to work function. Walk to building. The next thing. Saying if the actor's not in range, then it fails. They need to be in range of their target building to be able to enter a building. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. How can I get 99% of this, but not the last actual important part? Huh. Okay, so, well, you know what? Kind of just want to try running my game and have it crash. Because maybe it won't. I just, I don't think this is set up right. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. But like, what if it actually is already set up right? Okay, so we're going to hop to a success after five seconds. Oh, crap. Radicate, you're already on your fucking thing. And then we get success three and four and a failure five. So, first of all, Radicate. Oh, shit, you're not there. What the? Well, now, hold on. Did you just immediately go there? Did I just miss you going there? Why are you not in your starting spot? I guess I just looked away and then looked back and you're... Okay. Great, buddy. Okay, so we, we do get failure five. So things are not going through correctly. Everything still functions. So at least nothing we're doing is like catastrophic failure. But we're not succeeding at... Uh, we're not succeeding at the like at home check, which definitely makes sense to me, and I'm pretty sure it's all because of this. So let's let's just close these down. We're not working on these or these. Great, we're working on the rest action, but specifically before that. The at nest check and the go to nest action. Actually, the go to nest action works fine. That works perfectly well. He goes there. Although I guess. No, yeah, I guess I guess this should be fine. It can just return running. Because eventually, this the at nest check will succeed, and it will not try to run the go to nest action. And then, when the at nest check succeeds, we skip over the go to nest action, and we go right to the rest action. Okay, great. So logically, that makes sense. And so then, the thing we're failing at is specifically this check. We're not getting success five. We're getting failure five. So at home is not working. And if we jump back to Radicate, we can look at the at home function. The at home function is just like, hey, is my current building my home? So that will succeed if we can get current building to be equal to home. And we're trying to achieve that in here. We're trying to set Radicate's current building equal to its target building. And if that target building is home, which it, 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 it is two, two lines up, that's what we're doing. We're setting target building as home. Uh, I guess we could check to see if that works. So yeah, let's print 
Um, let's print target building. At this point, it should print home. Shit, does that need to be in quotes? No, no, because it's not a literal thing. It's a variable. Okay, so we want to see exactly where this is fucking up. Ooh, it's printing like the name. Rattata Den 1. Okay. Okay, so that might be like a misunderstanding on my part. Ah, oh, it's like the object ID. Well, is that okay? I think that actually might be okay. Shit. Okay, wait, hold on. So then let's also print home because those things need to be equal. They need to be equal to each other. Um, but it's a, right, I was thinking it would just be the word home. That target building would be the word home. But no, target building is your home, which is this weird fucking ID. Rattata Den 1 static body 2D number and then a big fat number. Okay, so then let's also print actor home. Save it. Print it. Sorry, save it and play. Hit me, bro. Okay. Okay, great. So, <laughs> first I was wrong about what to expect. I thought what, what was printed was a problem, but actually it's not. These are both just the same value twice. Okay. So then that does seem to pretty much narrow it down perfectly that the problem is the in range function, which I just like, I just don't fucking understand it. Um, if actor is in range of this thing actor target build oh that's what we're putting in actor target building position oh my god okay okay so that that oh, okay that's this the the target building's position and the target building is defined in radicate Right, he has a target building. It's that thing's position that is going into here. That is the building position. So then you should be right here. It's like target building position. And then the distance to that. The distance to that target building's position from the current actor's position. Okay. Okay, so now I understand how that's formatted. Still seems wrong, though. Um... The value that goes in there... is going to be this. Target building's position. So we definitely have a target building and it should definitely have a position. Um, let's see. Okay. 
Okay, so let me let me print that. Let's print target building's position. What's wrong? It's, sorry, sorry, you're right. I didn't copy the actor part. Why didn't I copy the actor part? Okay. Uh, and hold on, don't print it in there. You're not gonna succeed, bro. You're never gonna see that if you put it in there. Okay, we'll put that in there. Just, it, I know, I had an extra parenthesis. Chill out, man, chill out. Just fucking Godot. You gotta be cool with me. This is, this is fucking stressful. Okay, so we do get coordinates. Great. Hmm, okay. Now, in what is maybe an act of incredible idiocy, I didn't consider the fact that... Not the player, eradicate. Ah. Uh, shit. This is only working in a single dimension. So, uh, like, do we want to like not convert it to a bool? The the example that I'm working with, while it is 2D, all of the movement takes place along the x-axis. So there's like nothing going on with the y-axis. So we had some issues with getting Radicate moving to the nest because the example I'm copying is only movement in 1D and I needed to nicely have movement in 2D. The initial trans translation was not great. I figured out how to do the 2D version of it. So I don't know if that's what's going on here. Um, I feel like the idea here is we're converting a vector 2 to a bool. But let me let me confirm that. Uh, Godot, and then that. What does that do in Godot? Declares the type that the function returns. Okay, so this is going to return a bool. And what actually is a bool? I know bool is like yes or no. But is it just as a zero or a one? Da, 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 da. The bool is a built-in variant. It'll only store one of two values. Okay, it'll store true or false. Okay. You can imagine it as a switch that can either be turned on or off, or as a binary digit that can either be a one or a zero. Booleans can be directly used in if and other conditional statements. Um, What was that preview? By convention, built-in methods and properties that return booleans are usually defined as yes, no questions. Cast an int value to a boolean value. It returns false if from is equal to zero and true for all others. Okay, I think that was the preview that I saw. It's true if the two booleans are not equal. Okay, that's actually the thing that I want to look at. True if booleans... It's not in here. Ah, because of, the, because of that. Okay. This operation can be seen as a logical XOR. Interesting. Okay. So what, what is your problem? You're calling whatever goes in here a building position and it's gotta be a vector too. That's fine. It it absolutely is. Um Maybe I could just have you print. I can 
have you print this value to see what the fuck is going on? Because I feel like this is just not working. Hopefully you'll only print it when called. I think. Hit me with a print, buddy. Okay, so it just is not printing that even when that function should be being called. Right, the function is just called in range and it gets called during this check. And if we're hitting failure five, it's it is running through all of this. Right, we, we had a failure five, yep. So, so it's hitting the else, which means it looks at the two ifs. Hmm. Shit, okay, so yeah, maybe first of all, the way I'm formatting this is probably not smart. This, this shouldn't be an if in line with these two ifs. These two ifs are, it's an if and an else. These need to kind of be doing their own thing. This. Shit, this just like needs to be separate. Can it just like not be. Can it just be like not part of this? Um. Or, or hold on, will it just happen? Will it just happen and be fine? So, first, we are changing the actor's target building to be the actor's home. Then we're saying if the actor is in range, of that building's position. Then change its current building. Say that now you, the variable you have called current building, that's going to be called target building. Okay, let's let's see. I want to define actor. I want to print target building and current building again. Actually, I think we just did positions before. Is it getting Is that part getting through? Is our target building and our current building both the same zone? Is it is it both the rat ratata den? No. Okay. So current building is not being defined. So it does still just point back to stupid, the stupid in range function not working. Um, okay, let me, like, let me think about how I would do this, rather than just copying this guy's fucking work and having it not fucking work. What would I do? Having an in-range function absolutely makes sense. And what would you be putting into it? You would be putting in
building's position. So... Uh, if we just, like, don't... have the bool part. The whole point of the bool is for that, is for this to, like, return true or false. Dang, okay, no, that, yeah, that, that, that is what you want to do. Shit. Could I... What if I just try doing this in a different way? What if we just have, like... If... Can you just do subtraction of vectors? Will it know to do that? Because, like, essentially, we're going to be putting in a vector, which is, like, the, the building we're, we're concerned with at this moment in time. And it's just, like... Like, we're concerned with this building... We're, I don't know, we're over here. Let's say, I don't know, here's our, here's our x-axis, y-axis. Like, this is at, like, 2, 4. Sure, something like that. And then the, the our position is, like, I don't know, we're, like, 8, comma... How high are we? Like one? I don't know. Fine. Eight comma one. Whatever. It's not accurate. That's fine. So. We want to figure out how far away we are. And really like. Like if our if our X and Y values are just small. If we're going to if we're going to slowly automatically like move toward this thing, eventually these x and y values are going to get very small. And I feel like that's what uh was trying to be achieved. Oh shit. Puzzled bear, thanks for following, dude. Hope you're having a nice time. I'm a bit confused. But hopefully it's all worth it. Uh, okay, so let me let me think about what he's trying to do. Like, the, the idea makes sense. He's trying to do the thing that I'm explaining. Like, trying to get, essentially, if, um, if the, this, the X and Y, like, the total distance is under one, then this is going to return as true. Is, I think, the idea. And so, yeah, distance two looks like it's it is just calculating from from this to that. So, okay, I, I feel like I should make sure that those are are values being printed or values that I could print. Um, shit, if your whole point is just to return true or false, I probably can't just make you print something. Um, hmm. So you're saying whatever goes in here is going to be building position. Okay, I, I do think I tried this before, but I just want to try. Like, just print that value, bro. Just fuck it, just print it for me. Be a, be a nice function and print that for me. I know you're just going to return 
True or false, but could you print that for me? You should only print once we try to... Right, okay, once we flip over to success. Okay, it did print something, and actually... Let me... The... Just put it in quotes. Building position, maybe with like a colon. Uh, no, nope, we'll put a space there. I put a comma after you. Okay. Like, pretty sure. Pretty sure it did what I wanted. Pretty sure it printed building position. Wait five seconds. And there it is. Building position. Okay. So we are correctly feeding it a building position. Uh, on another line... I'm just going to print position. <laughs> uh, what, whatever the answer is to why this isn't working is going to be very fucking silly. Like going through each step of this, like very clearly shit works. Okay. So we have a building position and we have a position. They are both vector twos, right? Like I'm, I'm about to look up like, <laughs> like a vector two is just a vector with two dimensions, right? Okay, I guess in this case, it's not a magnitude and a direction. It's a uh, coordinates. Sure, an X, Y point in a 2D space. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, it is that. Okay. So, uh, is it is it the unit that is the problem? Um, let's okay. Let's print. Let's print this. Let's print that. Maybe the problem is I'm not like cycling through the behavior tree correctly. And that actually, if this just cycled through once more, once it moved Rattata, Eradicate, it's Eradicate, once it moves Eradicate, maybe it would lead to success. Okay. So... So yeah, that number is very high. And that makes sense, like, pix it's probably pixels, like it's 120 pixels away. Um, you know, okay, hold on. Now, this isn't this isn't the right answer for the long run, but just to see if my intuition's correct. Uh, actually, hold on. Let's move you away from the wall so we don't have to worry about collision or anything. Like, now Radicate, like, he's there. He's just fucking, he's there. So I think we'll get a success for the last portion because he's already there. Shit, we hit him. Okay. Okay, so, so, oh my god. The problem might be just so much simpler than what I thought it was that it's like not actually, it's not actually this guy's code. It's not actually me misunderstanding the code. It is that I have not formulated the behavior tree right. Oh my god, if that's the case, I'm I'm a sad man. Okay, so fuck, what is supposed to happen even? Uh because the, what I'm suspicious of is this this function is being called once when it's not true and then it's never being called again to be true to get us to like move on. So so that's in here. So the problem is that this just fails. And then if it fails, then we're supposed to send him we're supposed to to, to move him. 
to his nest. Now, it should, where's my behavior tree? It should like go again. Does it, if it's stuck in running, does it just not do anything ever? Shit. Do I need to tell the behavior tree when to stop running? Like when, when a function stops running? Shit. Hmm. Let's, let's look at the other example. The other example must have functions that are running, like, um, like walking to a building must return running. Yeah, duh, duh. You return success before running. So does, does running mean it's going to just be redoing this over and over? It's going to stay here specifically. Until it hits success or failure. Shit. Okay. So then we could just do this check twice. We could just do the in range check twice. That's that is probably a cleaner way to do that. But we just do that twice. We do it in the at nest section, but we also do it in the go to nest section. Okay, let's let's fucking uh Oh my god, it's going to be all of this. I sh Um, oh God damn it! What does his, his example look like? There's such a there's a definitely a cleaner way to do that. He just checks to see if he's in range here. And otherwise moves toward there. If he's not in range, he moves toward the building he's not in range of that he needs to be in range of. So he just has the in range check. He doesn't have to do all the shit I'm doing here. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to try moving all of this. I think it'll be okay. It seems redundant. This seems like not the right way to be doing this, but I think it will work. It'll be like messy, but uh, I yeah, messy might be the best I can hope for. Okay, you didn't paste in how I wanted, I don't think. Hold on. So for the previous thing, the ifs are in line with each other. Yeah, the ifs are in line with each other. Okay, why are you mad then? Unindent doesn't match the previous indentation level. Do I just have things like indented more than normal? All the ifs are indented once because they're part of this function. For this guy, the function's not indented. Ifs are indented once. Hmm. Okay, so we don't want to print success five. We do want to want to return success. Okay, so that's like too far in. That's part of this if, so that isn't too far in. Hmm, I guess, right, because I didn't, okay, I didn't have ifs before, 
So now this needs to be an else. Um, okay, so those two things were lined up. Fuck. And then this was indented. Expected indent after if block. Right. Expected colon after else. Oh, shit. Okay. Really? That was the fucking... Expected a statement found an indent instead. Oh, my God. Wait, is that... That's really... How it's... Not... Mm-hmm. Identifier target building not declared in current scope. Well, now it was. Wait, this is the part that was there before. This was fine. Hmm. <laughs> right. Okay. So I am being a little bit weird here. I'm saying that target building is home but I'm defining it as an actual variable, so this should be, like, up higher. Uh, but then also, I don't actually want to do it like that. Do I just want to do... Shit. Can I do actor target building? Because actor's target building should be home. Fuck, you're still mad at me. Uh, also, wait, yeah, can't we just do that? Oh my god, what is... There are really colons after else? There is, and then it's indented. What? Why is that structure so, like, wrong-looking to me? Oh, I guess it doesn't even actually... You don't even actually have to indent. You can't just, like, an if, just keep going. But then... It's weird that you don't need a colon after if, but you do after else? I don't understand that. Okay. Uh, I feel like this is not going to work because I did not really check my work and kind of just followed the complaints of the debugger until it. Okay, I mean, he, he did go in and he did disappear. I think that means we did it. Oh, shit. Cool. All right, I'm going to do a little confetti. Okay. Uh, great. We have we have cobbled together some functional bullshit. Um. So now what? Now we did we did this. He disappears on his nest. He goes there. He disappears. Ura. Okay. Oh, and I guess that this is actually really important. I did under learn the way that running works is it repeats that one thing. So it needs to have all runnings need to have within them a success possibility before the running thing, because then it's just it's just going to be stuck running if success comes after. Oh, I guess you could always have the, uh, an if like on, only go to running if these things are true. So if you have the right check, that could be fine. But if not, I feel like it's, it's it's probably just smarter to have success be first and success is activated by some ifs and then otherwise you go with running. Maybe not. Maybe I'm, maybe it's just completely arbitrary which one you choose. As long as your logic is correct, uh, you, you should end up okay. I can't believe I didn't understand that or realize I didn't understand that about behavior trees. Like, that should have been an obvious thing that I either realized from the beginning or that I was like, now this doesn't make sense. Uh, but great, I guess, because now we need to do something else with the running function. 
Well, not, it's, I guess it's not a function. It's a return value. I don't know. Okay, so we need to make Radicate, Radicate, I did say it right. We need to make his fatigue lower over time. So, uh, what do we set to running? I guess it's the rest action. Um. So, uh, I think what we're actually going to do here is return running. We're going to hide him. We're going to do some mumbo jumbo and we're going to return running. Let's just... That mumbo jumbo is lower eradicates fatigue. Um, and now that we understand that we're stuck in here, um, we could have. We'll have some ifs. So like, um, if his fatigue, shit, yeah, can we just, we could just use his fatigue value, right? It's just actor fatigue. Hmm. Yeah, do you even need to be putting... I guess I don't even need to put that value on the blackboard if I can always refer back. Oh, yeah, okay. I think I might be doing this wrong. Because... For, like, for all calculations in the game... We're probably going to be looking at Radicate's actual values. And if I make some equivalent value on the blackboard, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily smart because it's just like a duplicate. It's a separate value that is called fatigue, but isn't actually eradicates fatigue. Um, because what I want to have happen is like if eradicate gets in a fight and loses HP, I want losing HP to increase your fatigue. So fatigue is like an invisible stat that governs the creature's actions, but the player can't see it and it never really needs to interact with it. Um, but if Radicate gets into a fight and loses HP, that's going to raise its fatigue. And then if he goes to sleep, while he's sleeping, he's going to recover HP and it's also going to recover his fatigue. Um... And so what I want is to have that those two fatigue and health decoupled because then I can kind of have a have a creature that decides uh, it can come back out when it's at like 80% HP or something. Um, it doesn't need to be fully perfectly healed. Although maybe it will decide to change that. I don't know if that's necessarily valuable. I just kind of thought they're not exactly the same thing, so they shouldn't be thought of within the code as the same thing. But um, maybe for simplicity, they could be. But anyway, the, the point is that things are going to be affecting Radicate's fatigue stat, not the fatigue stat on the blackboard, because there, there are going to be things outside of the behavior tree that are going to need to interact with Radicate's fatigue. So, so I think, okay, so this might be a next time thing. I don't know what time is it. Oh, it's, it's 1140. Okay, so maybe. We're going we're gonna to keep doing what I'm doing now. We're going to keep going with getting this to function but i think we're going to need to revisit things where we use the blackboard value and we're just going to need to use like actor dot fatigue which i uh, mm. these are good for calculate the blackboard's good for calculating things like um like if we want to calculate the the best spot for berries and have that be in the blackboard. That's fine because that's not going to be interacted with outside of Radicate searching for the best spot for berries. It's like other things aren't going to affect that. Or manipulate that value. Effect. Yeah, sure. Okay. Redundant. I'm being redundant. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I will I will try changing these in the future. But for now, we're just going to figure out uh, changing the rest action. So, and, and we're going to try doing this, what I think now is the right way, which is we just refer to actor fatigue. 
But that could, that, damn, that could be a problem. Okay, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna try doing it this way. And I think the problem might be that we're, we're altering other fatigue values. We're altering the fatigue value on the blackboard, not eradicate. But let me, let me confirm that because that's actually important because I, I believe, I believe I'm good, right? Radicate is just increasing his own fatigue. Okay. Okay. So sure. So I, I, then I think we're okay for this check specifically that if the actor fatigue is, uh, if it's going to be actually, oh, yeah, sure. We'll just set it. Like if it's equal to zero, then you can, um, You can go ahead and show the character. He can reappear because this this is I'm thinking backwards, but this is like if he's done resting, right? You come in with some amount of fatigue, the fatigue goes away over time, and then now if you're at zero fatigue, boom, you pop back out of your nest, uh, and you're gonna you're done. You have returned uh, success. Also, you need to be indented, right? Why did I capitalize return? Because I don't know the grammar. Um, okay. So I think that'll be okay. Um, and so then, then the other thing to do is just going to be else with a colon. Um, otherwise... You're going to hide the actor because he's, uh, mm. okay. This is going to maybe be a bit, uh, redundant. We're going to be trying to hide the actor over and over. So maybe part of the go to nest action. When we return success, we should hide him because if we don't hide him here, then we're going to be, <laughs> Every tick of this while this is running, we're going to be hiding him over and over and over and over. Um, I'm going to leave it here for now, and then we'll, we'll optimize that. Uh, maybe, can I just put a note at the end? Maybe uh, hide eradicate in previous tree node. Okay, so... What is going to happen here is that we need to lower eradicate's fatigue. Um, so I think we can probably call the same, uh, we can use the same timer probably. And so what I'm thinking is we use this same function and so Radicate's going to be gaining fatigue. Um, ooh, so actually, how about, how about is, well, he'll come out if fatigue is, like, less than 15 or something. Wait, why are you mad about that now? A colon. Error at 426. Expected a colon after, so you do need a colon after if. Did it, now, what, huh? There's. They ain't no colons here. I'm okay. I'm, I'm misunderstanding something. Biggest forehead, Atticus. Hey, dude. <laughs> what is that emote? Oh my god. It's just a weird global emote. All right. She looks. They look worried. You can say you understand 3% of what you see. Honestly, that's pretty good. I, I I maybe understand 5%. It's a... Uh, it's a struggle. I, it, it, all of the red... All of the red lines... I don't understand why that's a, they're a problem. So, what am I making? Um, I'm trying to make a... Uh, like a Pokemon-like game with uh, tactical combat. But where I'm starting is I want the like the wilderness, like while you're out in your Pokemon world going from going through a route 
Uh, I want there to like be wild Pokemon walking around doing stuff, like eating food, sleeping, whatever. You're guessing there's a hunger rate too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we're working on fatigue, like when they get tired or if they get hurt in combat, they're gonna go like retreat to their den and sleep. Uh, they will also get hungry and they will also get thirsty. And those will be things behind the scenes that the player never sees. But the end result will be like when they're out in the world, they see all sorts of different creatures like going about their business. Some of them are thirsty. Some of them are hungry. Some of them hunt each other. Some of them like play with each other for fun or to like get stronger in combat. Are you a Pokemon or a trainer? A trainer. You'll be a trainer. So the whole point of this right now is just to make a world that has a sort of appearance of being uh, alive S with with the goal of like you being able to interact with things, right? Like um, if you know Raticate's hungry, you could maybe go beat him to the berry bushes he's going to go to. Oh, what do I mean by tactical combat? Uh, so tactical combat, let me, let me get, get some examples. So like Pokemon positioning doesn't matter. Um... Let's go with, uh, like, in, in Pokemon, attacks don't have ranges. You could just use an attack on an enemy in combat, and it's fine. Oh, this is a terrible... This this might be a better picture, sure. Um, I like... Just, just give me the whole thing. Oh, my God. Just accept cookies, fine. Um, so, tactical combat games are turn-based like Pokemon, but the, the gameplay generally takes place on, like, a grid or on some kind of map and your positioning matters. Yes, exactly, like Fire Emblem. So if you have an attack, like a sword slash, you can't just do that like 20 feet away from an enemy and have it hurt them. Like you gotta move up to them and that's gonna take you time. It's gonna take you some uh, part of your turn to move over to them to hit them. If you have an archer, they can probably hit the guy from much further away than your swordsman can. Um, so that that is tactical combat. It's. It's probably not the most obvious term, but it is a, a pretty well understood video game term at this point. I think. That would be a great idea. Yeah, it's it's something I've wanted from Pokemon for a very long time. And there is a Pokemon game with tactical combat uh, called Pokemon Conquest, but it's very clearly, uh, it's a different game with a Pokemon skin put onto it. And it's very fun, but it is not Pokemon. How would they eat and be fatigued from tactical combat? So they'll get fatigued from combat, like they'll get hurt. Um, and some of them might consider retreating from combat, like running away from you when they get hurt. Um, some of them won't do that. It'll just be down to their each species, like personality or like intelligence. Um, the, the eating will happen like outside of combat. So the idea would be that like you as a player could just be traveling through the world and you will see Raticates, you'll see, you'll see all, all kinds of Pokemon and they'll be doing different things because of the fact that uh, each of them has like a, they have like a hunger meter, a thirst meter, a fatigue meter that that is not visible to the player. And this is like outside of combat. Um, so over time, they'll just naturally get hungry. So you, the player, could go and like sit down somewhere and you could like watch the world and you could see that like, oh, there's two Raticates and they're like playing for a while. And as long as I stay far enough away from them that I'm not a threat, um, they will eventually get hungry and they'll go and seek some food. So them getting hungry would be outside of combat. Do you get into tactical combat or is the world itself grid-like? So I think the world is going to be grid-like, just like uh, a Pokemon game. You essentially in Pokemon are moving, you're moving from tile to tile um, for the sake of simplicity. And the, the idea will be that you can just be moving through the world and it's like real time. But the moment that combat happens, the moment that like you run into an aggressive creature or the moment you like take your bow and you shoot eradicate the game will go into turn-based combat and then it'll only go out of turn-based combat once there is no longer any kind of threat um either the eradicate runs away so there's nothing to fight anymore or you defeat it or you capture it uh or you die i guess if you die and then wake up back at like the inn 
like somebody saves you and drags you back to the inn, then when you wake up, it'll no longer be tactical combat. Um, but the goal is for it to be, um, you, unlike a normal Pokemon game where you're like walking through the grass and then there's like a transition into a battle mode. Uh, the idea with the game that I'm making is that you you don't actually really transition you just the, the game just goes into turn-based mode you can't you can't move forward anymore without choosing move as an option within like a tactical combat menu um but the the world will be the environment that the fights take place in essentially i don't like the way that uh in in the pokemon world when you go into a battle all of the outside world is like gone. Like there could have been a trainer standing next to you when you ran into a wild Pokemon and then the Pokemon you're fighting, like the the trainer would be standing right there. Like it, it's weird. It's weird that now all of a sudden the trainer is just gone for the purpose of you having your little one-on-one -on -one fight with this wild Pokemon. Um, so yeah, the, the goal is to just have like a, a more realistic Pokemon world. I, I want to see like Raticates running around and like playing with each other, getting food. Uh, getting hunted by pidgets, uh, drinking water, taking baths, like just being able to just see the world existing and feeling like it's alive. Um, and then if the player goes to interact with any of those Pokemon, if they get close enough, the, a, a pidget will probably attack you. A Rattata might run from you. A Eradicate, maybe if he's big enough and strong enough, he might decide like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fight you, buddy. Um, and so, yeah, the idea is just more immersive realism, I guess. And the, the end game goal is to not use, uh, to not use Pokemon assets, but like currently I'm like building the world using Pokemon assets, but like, I, I can't, I can't like actually publish the game that way. So eventually I will be, uh, working on my own pixel art on, uh, on Thursdays, but for now, Thursdays is like setting up the lore of the world and like the magic system and the combat system. Um, and then eventually I'll move into like designing assets. You think Raticates are especially aggressive too? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, my initial plan is to get the world functioning and to try and make them as realistic as possible for their species. Like, like I also like this is a little tiny island. I want to have like certain creatures that'll be in the water. Like maybe a Gyarados is in deep water. Maybe like seals will come up into shallow water, um, things like that. But then eventually I'm going to s move away from Pokemon and come up with my own beasts to catch to like capture and uh i guess the idea is you don't really capture them it's like you defeat them in combat and then they like respect your strength and all of these creatures are affected by some kind of a, a situation in the world where like magic is pushing them to like fight with each other and become stronger so they they see you and if you defeat them they're like okay like you're you're strong i will i will join your party fine you can imagine them playing catch with berries that's cute my current plan is to just have them like kind of chase each other around and then when they get hungry they'll go and eat berries is the uh is the current idea uh shit but yeah the, the thing that i'm currently like embedded into is um a thing called a behavior tree and the the idea is that you make a bunch of simple actions and you you essentially like connect them in a certain way that they form this like tree and then this determines how the radicate will act, will act at any given moment inside the game um so you have like the base of the tree and then it it tries to start from the left and go right and so on the left are all of the things that radicate needs to survive if it's hungry or thirsty or tired it will deal with those things and then on the right once all of those things are dealt with then it will try to deal with its wants it'll try to like play with other eradicate or it'll try to just like relax in the grass maybe walk around maybe sniff sniff some things whatever the hell eradicates would do when they're not busy fighting for their lives or getting food or water or whatever whatever it is they need to do um and so the idea is to come up with a bunch of very simple actions and simple statements as to when those actions happen but then you put them all together and it it makes a seemingly complex set of actions that that kind of i, I don't know makes it makes it appear like the the ai is intelligent or 
complex, but really it's just a bunch of simple things that it's trying to do in a certain order, is the uh, is the general idea. And uh, I'm I'm still quite I'm quite quite early on at the very beginning, and also I don't know Godot very well, so it's a uh, boy is it an uphill battle. And I'm I'm just at the point where now I can get Radicate to go to his his nest you can do and it. go inside it. Thank you. I maybe maybe I, it's like fifty percent chance I feel that I could figure it out. But you know I'm I'm, I'm just gonna keep trying. So currently Radicate will go to his nest, and now what I need him to do is lose his fatigue. He goes to the nest tired, becomes not tired. You gotta go now for sure, dude. Have a nice day. Uh, I'm here every Tuesday working on it if you want to stop in every so often and see how it's coming along. Progress will be slow. Especially right now. Okay, so this, this is a conditional statement. If its fatigue is less than 15, that's a conditional statement. What's your problem, Godot? Huh. Interesting. Their idol could be hanging out near trees because in the decks it says in the Pokedex it says that it gnaws on rocks and trees. And houses! Because its fangs infinitely grow. That's a good point, yeah. I should when I decide on the idol this stuff, I should definitely look up the Pokedex. So it scrapes its fangs to make it smaller. Yeah, I think beavers do that exact same thing. Their teeth just keep growing and because they're used constantly. And so like when they uh, if they like don't use their teeth enough, they need something to like chew on to stop their teeth from growing so long that they uh, can't chew on things anymore. Which is really a horrifying thing to think about. Although maybe that would be a nice like it sucks that when you screw up your teeth, your teeth are just screwed up. It would be kind of sweet if they just grew. Okay, so how, what is your problem? What is your problem here, buddy? Let's, okay, let's take all of this off. Why are you mad about that? That is a conditional statement. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Actor fatigue will not always be under 15. Okay, so I guess I've just I guess I'm just gonna get the logic in here and then try to fix this. So if it's fatigue, that just doesn't it doesn't seem like I should need that. If the actor's fatigue is under 15, then great, then he's like healed. Then you should show him and you should return success. Cool. Otherwise, you're gonna hide him and actually should this be Back with function no no it should be indented god damn it okay otherwise you're gonna hide him and you're gonna subtract fatigue whenever whenever a timer times out so the timer itself is gonna be starting over and over So hopefully we can just take this and just put it in here. Mm, okay, we're not defining this function. We can just call it. You're looking forward to it when it releases, bro. It's going to be like a decade. Unless I can... I, I may just start spending like all of my fucking free time on it. It's, it's fucking exhausting at this point right now, though, because there's so much I don't understand. You can wait a decade, all right. Hopefully I can too. Um, okay, so we want to call the actor function? Ooh, no. Dang. I guess actually, we can just subtract fatigue 
just to see if this works. Nope, that's not the minus sign. Nope, that's not the minus sign, bro. Where is the minus sign? How can I not? I don't even know where the minus sign is. You've done it before with Geometry Dash. Nice. What stops you from doing it again? Well, we e either of us could die, really, is, is the main thing. But I hope that doesn't happen. That, that would suck. On either end. That would suck. Okay, and so actually... Let's take off... Let's take off like 10 each time this runs, so that'll be pretty quick. And then, right, this needs to be indented like that. Okay, so this should function for what I want right now, except for the fact that it's, like, mad at me about things. Here at 426. That's the end of this. Right. Do you really need a colon there? Okay, right, because it's if this thing, then then put the colon to say you do the all these things that come after it. Oh, my God. Okay. Then we also need one here. No. Nope. Okay. Why are you mad here? At 8 and 9, expected a statement, found an indent instead. Here, you expected a statement. Huh, okay, I guess because else's are weird. Because the else has the colon immediately. What the fucking... What the fuck? Okay, let's just put this down here. What is your problem, bro? Else do this thing and return running. Yeah, I guess. I guess I don't need the indent. That seems crazy. Okay, and then also now it's mad about show. Okay, right, because actually what we want to do is actor show, right? Right, and then, d duh, okay, actor fatigue. Great, oh my god, okay. Holy crap. Okay, so now what's going to happen is it's going to hide him and every tick of the tree... It's going to take off 10 fatigue until he's under 15 fatigue. Then it's going to show him again. I would let, let's see if this actually works. Okay. So his fatigue's at 40. It's going to bump up to 51. He's okay. Okay. Okay, now it didn't... Ooh... Did it hide him, but then it just unhid him so fast? Yeah, it just unhid him so fast I couldn't see it. It's probably... Yeah, yeah, it just immediately... Okay, okay, okay. I thought... I thought if it took, like, five frames, I could notice him disappear, since this is happening once a frame. Okay, so it's not. So then I need to have something happen every few seconds. Um, so then I think what we can do is have this happen on, on timer timeout, but then uh, if we go back to Raticate, because Raticate is constantly restarting this timer, this five second timer. So... Uh, Let's 
So let's see. When we go to call something, we just do it like that. Okay. So it's just going to be... Oh, yeah, right. I didn't need to actually copy that. It's just actor dot and then and then this function. Because I need to do something on timer timeout. Hmm. Shit, but right, but where do I want to put this? It needs to be. Oh shit, also, no, not in here. In the rest action. Oh boy. Shit. Just go back. Shit, wow. Control Z and Control Y are... Uh... Are unique for each page. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. I thought it was like a global undo and redo. But each script has its own undo, redo stuff. Holy shit. Okay, that's very cool. Okay. So how do I actually do this? Only on timer timeout do I want actor's fatigue. to subtract. So for radicate, no, okay, yeah, this is not gonna work. We can't call this function because then it's just gonna do these things. So then the, it needs its own on timer timeout and we need to connect that timer to it. Okay. Okay. Um. So. Uh, it should all be part of the else situation. And then this is what we want to do. Okay. Okay. And then... 8-1. Standalone Lambda cannot be accessed. Okay, so I should, I, should, I should connect this before I worry about this not working right. Um, shit. Okay, so how the fuck do I connect a signal to you? Shit. Can you just drag the timer? No, right, that gives you the address. Damn it. Ah. Connecting signals is so important, and I do it infrequently enough, I don't remember how to do it. All right, where's the part where we connect a signal? Connecting a signal. Okay. Okay, so it is in here, but then... Hmm. How do I actually... I actually do that. Node needs a receiver method, a function that Godot will call when the button emits the signal. Okay, that is definitely what I want. Let me go look at Radicate, because Radicate has it. 
this situation is this timer connected to Radicate. Can I then... Then does that mean if I select the rest action, then I get the nodes? Ooh. Or I get this, yeah, I get signals in the node tab. But, shit, I don't get what I want, which is this timer. So maybe I need to make another timer because you can only have one thing happening on a timeout. Um, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna duplicate you, Mr. Timer. Uh do you just have a duplicate option? You do, great, okay. Okay, so we're gonna call timer two. And you should not be connected to that. You are okay, I don't like that. Don't do that. Und ah crap. 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 Okay, so just, just go all the way forward. Tried to undo stuff in here. That's not what I want. Um, I would like to undo the existence of the timer. Okay, great. I just had to be active in here. Okay. So, fine. We're just going to make a new node that is a timer. Because that's a thing. Great. And then let's just put that fucker at the top. This isn't, this isn't that crazy. Okay, so... You send out a timer timeout signal. So now if I go back to rest action, you're still not available. How the hell? Just choose connect. Okay. And then I'm trying to connect you to the rest action. I think I'm trying to connect you to the fucking rest action. Uh, and so then that would mean... Fuck, how do I actually get you set up? Alright, let's... Nope. Nope. Too many minimizings. Okay, let's bring Flannery's example up, back up, my example, and then this. Okay. So... Uh... Simple one allows you to connect to nodes that have a script attached to them, creates a new callback function on them. Okay. So now hold on. On timer two timeout, duh. Okay, okay, cool. So if we do that, it should be okay? Are you cool? Is that okay? You're not cool. How did I get this to work previously? God damn it. Click the connect button to complete the signal connection and jump to the script workplace. You should see the new method with a connection icon. Oh, it should have made it like that. Crap. It put it down here. Fuck. Okay. Okay. So... Now, weirdly, it doesn't have the little connected symbol like the radicate thing does. Okay, so uh, I move you up here. Will you be mad about that? No. Why are you mad about return running? Oh, because this isn't indented anymore. Okay, now, but the thing is... I only want you to do this as part of the else situation. Which should be indented because it's... Oh, right, I can't have, like, a function inside of a function. Shit. Okay, okay, so that might be a problem. Uh-oh.
Okay. Note, go way down there. You are important, but not right now. A time or two timeout. I, I, like that. Okay, this is still what I want to do. I just don't understand how to do this. So... Shit, is the idea that I have to put this function in the actor script, I have to put it in Radicate's script so that I can call it because that's how we're calling func extra functions inside of this function. Maybe there's a way to just do that locally. Ah. Ooh, yeah, okay, so this is confusing. This is a weird thing. Because the... Everything that you have happen... As part of the behavior tree... Needs to be part of this function, because this function... The tick function... Is essential to the core of a behavior tree, which is that every... Tick... Which is every frame... The tree is trying to act out some part of it. And so now the problem is that my else in here needs to do something on a timer timeout. Um, but is there an easier way to do that in Godot? Um... Can I just, like, wait? Wait seconds in a code. Yeah, I just want to, like, fucking wait. What are the odds I find what I needed three years after this post was made, but within a day of your comment? That's very funny. Wow, yeah, this answer was... Oh, sure, maybe they just updated it for Godot 4. Yeah, this is interesting. Someone's saying they could have done something simple like wait two seconds. Why is Godot not... Get tree create timer 2.0 timeout. Will that actually just do what I want? I guess we'll find out. So we're going to forget about doing this and just I guess we're going to try that. So then the idea will be that it'll wait two seconds and subtract 10 fatigue. And then it's going to check, hey, is your fatigue under 15? No. Okay, fine. Then keep Radicate hidden. Wait two more seconds. Subtract 10 fatigue. Okay. Let's see if that works. This, I guess this is just like creating a signal in code. You're just making the timer and connecting this thing to it. And then waiting for it to time out. I don't fucking... Oh, boy. Trying to call an async function without a wait. Well, okay. I don't understand what that means. So probably this doesn't play nice with behavior trees. Probably this is trying to wait and the behavior tree is like, no, I need every, just you fucking, you don't wait. You keep going. You keep trying and trying again to find something to do. Okay. Can't do that. Fuck. Mm. 
Oh my god, I can't believe this is so fucking hard to figure out. Let's close you. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. You don't... Yep, yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you're not responding. I know, buddy. I'm so sorry. That is my fault. Your brain is probably just stuck in an infinite loop, and it's all my fault. Um, okay, so that does not work. Let's take that back. Um... Uh, Okay, so I guess I guess I want to try Okay, like, yeah, how how would I do this? We would we would put the on timer timeout. Uh we would put that into the actor. And then And then we would do this. Expected a statement you find an indent instead. Yeah, I guess I don't need to indent. So then we would say, oh, and timer two times out. Subtract 10 fatigue. Oh my god. Also, what did I. What? The. Uh. Okay. Expected end of statement after expression found a colon instead. Don't I need... Oh, I guess maybe this needs to be indented like that? Bro, I need you to do this thing only when this happens. Don't just... Fuck. Okay, so maybe there's a way to do this in Behave, and I should look up Behave. Netflix games has Minesweeper now, sweet, but is it is it shitty like Microsoft Minesweeper? Or is it like good Minesweeper? Like classic Minesweeper? Um... Okay, now I need behave. God damn it, it's just, it's just gonna be stupid people intentionally spelling behave weird. I don't think I'm going to find what I want. The Minesweeper game looks decent. It says no ads. Well, you didn't answer my question. What version of Minesweeper is it? Did they make their own Minesweeper? That would... That would be impressive. <sighs> they did make their own. Huh. I, I didn't really think they would care to do that. Alright, cool. Hopefully it's got cool colors, cool skins. Like, if you're just gonna make a bare bones Minesweeper, like, just take take the probably now free Microsoft one. Hopefully they have some cool something they added that's interesting or unique. Even if it's just some cool skins.
Holy shit, I cannot figure out how to add the timer into here. I was thinking you put it on Radicate. But then... Shit, okay. I, but I, then I don't know how to make it only perform its function when the rest action is running. If I do, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me let me think about this. So if we take timer two, and how do like how do I disconnect you, buddy? Disconnect, great. Okay. So let's take timer two, and then fuck, I need to connect you. Already don't remember how to connect you. I swear, I just right clicked and there's a connect option. There's not. Oh my god. Son of a bitch. It's hard to learn when you're old. You'd probably have streamed it tonight. Oh, but you're finishing Avatar. Sweet. Last Airbender? I feel like last time we talked about Avatar, it was Last Airbender. It's really annoying. That is such a broad term. It's really annoying that people call Avatar the last airbender Avatar, but then also the stupid like tall blue people thing is also just called Avatar. It's fucking lame. You wonder if you can stream Netflix games since Netflix shows have copyright protection. Oh, that'd be so crazy if they copyright protected the games too. I wouldn't put it past them. You were talking about Last Airbender. I need to watch that shit. Okay, crap. Should just control F for connect again. Okay, connecting a signal in the editor. Right, it's just over there. Oh my god. Okay, so if you're over here and you, you just click that, same place you disconnect. Okay, so we want to connect that to Radicate. Interesting, and then here we got the little connection arrow. We didn't get it in the other script. That's weird. You have to use Edge with Hardware Acceleration to screen share it. Oh my god. It's with Hardware Acceleration disabled to screen share it. Interesting. It works. <laughs> Fucking of course it works on Edge. Stupid Edge. Hey, Dirk Lover. Room, are you back? Is that like a car noise? Like you just, you just got, you got back? What, what happened? Um, okay. What? Ooh. Okay. Wait, what if we have the other script start the timer? And then... Okay, okay, wait, this this might actually work. Hold on. Uh, let's subtract 10. We'll set the timer. Timer will be one second. Fine, fine. Yeah, no, just, yeah, reset. One second, and it doesn't auto start. So... Uh, We just, we start it. Shit, it's got to be timer two. We start timer two in here. Uh, 
Uh, just be timer to start. And then we handle the fatigue. So the fatigue gets handled elsewhere. Okay, I don't think this is going to work. But it, it might. Yes, your internet got Black Death. Oh my god. Or one out for Dirk's internet. Okay, this might work. And if this does work, dear god, I, I need to just, like, not stare at a screen anymore. Okay, no, it crashed. Attempt to call function start in base null instance on a null instance. Now... And now I don't see why that should be a problem. Um, ooh, actually, hold on. Wait, the address is... Yeah, because we're, like, nested. We're fucking deep, bro. How's that? Is that better? Are we cool with that? Okay, now I have to close the thing. Right. <laughs> Me when the null instance isn't based. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, try it again. I think now I have the correct fucking address because we're parent of a parent of a parent of a parent. Okay, so we're going to hit 51. He's going to go onto his nest. He's going to disappear. And then... And then just nothing's happening. Okay. So that's not good. We didn't crash. But what the fuck? His fatigue is supposed to increase. Okay, so so the fatigue sequence wants to do everything in it. So first it's going to do a fatigue gr greater than 50 check and it's going to print. We get a success two in there. And then, you know what? Why not? Let's just print our fatigue at every fucking point. Um, just add that on. So then we do a hunger check. And we should succeed. We should get success three, which we were. Okay. Then we're going to do the thirst check. We'll get four, which we did get four. And then we got failure five. Hmm. Fatigue supposed to increase or decrease? Well, Dirk, now I'm, uh, since you've been gone, Radicate gets to his nest now. So fatigue should be increasing over time until he gets to his nest, and then it should rapidly decrease, is my current goal. And then once it's back down to zero, he's gonna pop out of his nest. That's the, that's the goal. He goes in, he sleeps, he emerges once fully rested. Um, okay, so the sequence goes success, success, success. Then it's looking for a, a single success from the fatigue selector. And so what is happening there? We're getting failure five. Shit. Okay. So we need to get success five. And then, oh no, I put it in the wrong spot. And then print the fatigue value. So we're getting failure five. Wait, blackboard's not declared in the current scope? You shut your mouth. Yes, it is. Shit, is that underscore not supposed to be there? Weird. Okay. Fuck. Okay, I, did I actually never fix that? Wait. We're not getting a current... Oh, I guess I thought I fixed it, but I didn't. It still doesn't have an actor current building. What the fuck? Shit. 
Will it be fully rested if it's simultaneously also drained by Raticate's own process? Yeah, because for now it's gonna just happen faster. So that I can so that I can see the result. But yeah, I think what, what we'll do is we'll turn off the other timer. We'll stop the other timer eventually. That will be the, the next step. Uh, we'll turn it off while he's resting and then turn it back on. Essentially, one timer goes on, the other goes off, and then the reverse will happen after he's done resting. Shit, okay, so I thought I fucking fixed this. Clearly, I didn't. Okay, so... The problem is, is that we have a null value for the actor's current building. And... So what is happening? If the actor is in range, then you're supposed to do this. Shit, I swear, I swear I got this to work. Fuck. <laughs> Okay. Mother fucker. Okay, so what's supposed to happen is if we get a failure five, the selector wants one of these to succeed. So if we get a failure five, then it should have done the go to nest action. And I guess I should put some I should print some things in here so we know if what is happening is if what is supposed to be happening is happening. So... So then if he's in range, print this. Shit. So shit, should this not be an else statement? Is that what's fucking this up? See, he gets in range. Oh my god. Oh my god, you little fucking radicate. Hold on. He gets in range. Okay. So he gets in range and then we still hit a failure because the failure checks before he's actually in range. And that's okay because then in here, we should be able to return a success. Uh, do I need to capitalize print? Probably not. Um, shit. And what is this? This is six. So this will be success six. And then, do I still have it? Yep. And let's print your fatigue value. So... Ooh, and maybe we should print... Uh, the... These two values. Actually, really, it's just the current building's fine. It's target building that we're having trouble with, right? Because we're printing... Oh, shit, no, target building's fine. Current building is the problem. Okay. Current building is the problem. Right, because that's the thing I'm trying to define here, and it doesn't seem to be working right. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, where are you even, where are you getting hidden now? You're getting hidden here?
So the selector is succeeding. Okay, what the fuck, bro? This is so confusing. I'm so fucking confused. Thought I solved my problem. I clearly just made a presumption. Figured out one tiny aspect of it. Thought it fixed it. Okay. Maybe it did. God fucking... Oh my god, I wish I could... Still fucking smoke weed without feeling like garbage. Because I would love to just go take a giant hit of the bong. Oh my lord. Open like a cold beer. Holy shit. Problem's killing me. Okay. So we do end up successful. And you know what? Actually, I guess... For the sake of consistency, I want to I want to print the same thing. So not the rest action. It's you. I want to print both of these values, and then you succeed. So so we now do have we now do have both a target building and a current building. Let's make sure. Okay, so we didn't have a current building. We had our target, but we weren't in it yet, so we didn't have a current building, just a target. Then once we get there, we do in fact both have a target and a current building that we're in. Okay. So then this hits success. Which means the fatigue selector is satisfied. It goes on to the rest action. It is hiding Radicate. Let me... You know what? Fucking... Taking that out. And then Radicate should not be hidden anymore. Because I feel like this isn't actually activating and something else is doing it. No, it, that is what's hiding Radicate. Okay. 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 What? So then... Then we do get here. We do get to running. And I guess actually, you know what? Um... This is like number seven. Let's print running seven. Gotta put it in parentheses, bro. Oh. Now, Godot, it normally would be helpful for you to put two parentheses and with my thing in the middle, but I had already typed it. I was just trying to get one. Yeah, okay. I just needed it. Let's... We want spaces before and after. Um, and then... Let's print actor fatigue. Because are you just going to do this one time? Or will you keep trying it? Because I need, I need that. I need you to keep trying that. But I, yeah, and I guess, okay, maybe running is the wrong thing. Maybe I just need it to fail so it'll start over. Okay, no, no, running does what I thought. You're, you're constantly doing it. Okay. So, uh, that means that should start the timer. And the the timer should subtract 10 fatigue. Shit, the timer doesn't restart. I'm, oh my, I'm just not restarting the timer. Um, so, uh, Whoa, God, where do I do that? Hold on. So here, you just start the timer. Back up. I guess... Never timeout. Well, I'm having it on timeout. I'm having it subtract. So I think actually you, we do have it restart here. We do have it restart itself, so this is just going to keep looping every two seconds. Like, no, it's every second. Every second, we're going to lose 10 fatigue. And then, in here, 
we stop it. I think. Wait. No, 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 that's not going to work. Hold on. Yeah, because now there's, this is just going to be happening happening every two seconds. Okay. So the t you don't want to restart the timer here. Shit. Okay, yeah, I think I still don't understand how to do this. Because starting the timer here is just restarting it over and over. Fuck. I need to start it only if it's not starting, if it's not going. So, oh crap, okay. Can you have an if statement inside of an else statement? I should check if it's already working. Well, it works once, I believe. Oh, actually shit, maybe it was, no. Hold on. Hold on. Um. So yeah, I, the actually, yeah, let me just run this just to double check, but I'm pretty sure the timer is getting started, is getting restarted every frame. So it never times out. So our value is never going to go down. It's going to just slowly keep increasing. Check if it's active as a condition. It's, uh, it is, it should not be. I believe it is not. Well, I guess that's auto start. Shit. Um, okay, then I don't know how to check if it's active as a condition. So, like, conceptually, first I need to understand conceptually where to put this. Wait, I could see that? Read docs on timer. I don't know where that is. Docs. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, read. Okay, read the documentation on the internet. Oh my god. Well, okay. Well, we, yes, we could do that. I think first I need to conceptually understand what I need to do. Because then I think I know how to do this. I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is and I just need to like test. I just keep restarting it before it times out is the problem. So... First of all, does the timer have an ability to not be restartable? Because that would be really cool. Like, you can only restart it. Uh, one sh Like, I want it set so I can it'll only restart if it's not counting down already. Only start it if it is currently stopped. One shot. If true, the timer will stop when reaching zero. If false, it will restart. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's not what I'm after, I think, but... Okay, so I need this set up so that, like, I guess I'll just, I'm just going to write this out. If the timer is running... Do nothing. If the timer has timed out, start it. Those are the things I need to do, but as part of this. So...
So can we do like... Like this else, else if statement is going to be like... Shit. Okay. Oh my god. Where's the fucking pound key? How did... Is, oh my god. What is the whole thing that I'm trying to do? Hide actor. Do nothing if timer running. Hide actor. Restart timer if timer not running. So, uh, okay. So if actor fatigue is greater than or equal to 15, um, And so Ooh, shit, thanks, Derek. It's timer dot time left. Okay. Okay. So that's timer two's address. So if that timer's time left. Uh, okay, so wait, what is this situation? This is where I want to start it. So... Oh my god, I, this, I like, I, my, my brain is fucking cooked right now. This is just a simple, this is like when someone's like, I can't not go to the store, and my, I, my brain can't make sense of the two negatives. Okay. My fatigue is high, so I'm going to need to lower it, and I want to start the timer. I would only want to start the timer if the time left on it is equal to zero in this case. So in this case, it's if the time left is equal to zero, then then what I want to do is hide and start the timer and print that. Okay, also you're mad at me about this. 72, assignment is not allowed inside an expression. Oh my God, bro. Fuck. I don't want to assign that. I want to check to see if it's zero, right? Shit. Shit. <laughs> uh, okay, wait. I guess we could do... Yeah, check would be two equals... Oh, I guess it's angry now about something. Oh, my God. The colon at the end of the if Oh, my God. I thought it still had, like, an actual problem. It had a, a stupid me problem. Okay. So if your fatigue is greater than 15, greater than or equal to 15, and the timer has zero time left. Then you're gonna you're gonna hide the radicate, which this is we're gonna move this later. This is wrong, but right now it's the only spot he gets hidden. You're gonna hide radicate, you're gonna start the timer. Act code colonoscopy. <laughs> oh my god. My my code needs constant colonoscopies. Code lanoscopy. Okay, so then, 
then we can just have an else. I think there's an easier way to do this, but... Uh, oh shit, no, but oh, we do want to return running for this, though. We also return running for that. Then... We have... A similar situation. If the actor's fatigue is greater and then the the time left is not zero then don't you fucking dare restart that timer just print me out your fatigue okay and yes we still need to move the hide radicate command to a previous tree doesn't make sense to keep hiding him in here i hadn't realized that when i got here um okay this might work so i'm just gonna fucking try it So, uh, oh my God, it's working. Okay. So, okay, okay, okay. Hold on. We're, we need it to stop. We obviously, we need to stop it, but the first step is getting it running. I want to make sure he reappears at the right time. I wasn't looking for that. I'm going to full screen for that. Go, Radicate, go. I believe in you. Come to life. Okay, he should just pop up at some point. Great. Okay. Honestly, I got three minutes. That's where we stop. What? I'm going to leave some notes for myself, though. So, so what's the problem now? We made, we made his fatigue lower, but now, now we have a problem. Huge. It, honestly, for me, this is pretty big. Uh, so, Radicate's fatigue keeps going below zero so fix that um also turn off timer one when timer two starts and vice versa okay uh we and we already did that we made eradicate reappear okay so we did those two steps but then we still kind of got to get this correct Oh my god, the procedures were successful, Doctor. Kind of. Kind of. That was like part one of... I, I don't know, like a, a five-stage, three-stage procedure? Something like that. Oh my god, okay. So, like, what did I even accomplish today? I... I made... I made Radicate... Oh, he moves, he moves directly now. He doesn't move oddly. And now he disappears. And now his fatigue recharges and he reappears. Cool. Holy shit, that was four hours of my life. Oh my god. Now, now hopefully it's like these are all baby steps and then eventually, like, I could just make... I can make a... A, a completely new Pokemon's activities in, like, one session. Once I get all of the base actions going. Holy shit. This is ridiculous. I accomplished something while being baked to the finest crisp. Actually, it's not that hot in here. I don't know if Crazy Pants is just like running the air conditioner at full blast, but like, like last week I was getting like sweaty just existing under these lights in this office. Let's see how, what's, what's the temp sitch? Uh, there we go. Oh my god, it's 86 degrees in here. Oh boy. Greg's fine. She's a... Uh... Ooh, actually, could I... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We can, we can maybe see Greg. There we go. Nope. There we go. There's Greg. She's just hanging out in the part of my room that's super messy because it's usually not on camera. She's totally fine. Cats are... Cats are desert creatures. At least the domestic cats are. So they just... They just flop down and do nothing. Low energy, which is honestly how I like Greg. She's she's fucking crazy when she's high energy. Oh my god. Alright, so yeah, it's fucking 86 degrees in here. That's like way hotter than it normally is. I don't know how I am not just like sweating. But yeah. Um oh yeah, so real quick, Wednesday I have a bunch of crap I have to do. Um so I'm not gonna stream tomorrow. I do need to figure out what to stream after Undertale though. 
uh, something turn-based, something not an action game. Uh, maybe in the Discord, I'll share like a list of games. I'll try to get that list together today, and then then we'll, like we'll have a week to decide. I don't know. I'll I'll take user input. Um, it'll probably be a short list. Like there's there's some games I want to fucking play. I can't remember them right now, but I have a lot of things that I have purchased and have not played. So we'll find we'll find something cool to play. Uh, but yeah, Dirk, definitely more lore on Thursday. I don't think I don't think I'm ready to do more coding yet. And then also I'm afraid I'm afraid of the situation where once I'm not taking baby steps with the code and I need to start like making levels and filling everything in, like I need to have all the lore, the the combat system, the magical interactions, the characters, like all that shit needs to be done. That shit needs to be like 90% locked in. So so definitely more lore. Uh, I think we're going to go through like characters and gameplay loops, how the characters interface with those gameplay loops so that we get all of the like core game gameplay loop ideas set in stone. And then I can start expanding like the uh, the story from there to make sure that all the gameplay loops that I want fit inside the story. Seems like a reasonable way to go about it. I don't know. I'll probably forget something, but yeah, it, it, it is what it is. So anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out, dudes. I'll be back not tomorrow. Uh, th Thursday. Thursday, we'll do more lore. Oh, Puzzled Bear. You're the dude who followed me. Or lady. I don't know. You were the, the person. There we go. Thanks for streaming. You found me on YouTube and you're watching my series of making a game with no experience. Sweet. You hope to contribute to a game and use content like mine to help you along the way. Sweet, dude. Ah, uh, that's that's awesome. That's like the that's that's my goal is to at least help some people. Um, shit. Revisit the magic link if I have time. You're right, Dirk. I need to do that. I have tomorrow. I have stuff to do tomorrow, but I, you're right. I, I will do that. And we might also go through that, the thing about magic, the, the questions that you proposed I look at about magic. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out. This is a lot of fun. A bit frustrating. I appreciate you all being here. I'll be back Thursday. Have a, have a nice Tuesday and Wednesday. Bye.